What's up, everybody, and welcome to Flagrant. And today, I am incredibly happy to have uh, an illustrious guest. Wow. A, a absolute goat in the YouTube realm, the greatest at what he does. And I think you could make argument for one of the greatest YouTubers ever. Wow. Mm. I'm sure you want to be the greatest YouTuber ever. Mm. He's going to, he's going to, I mean, you guys know uh, Marquez Brownlee. Hey. Hey. Marquez Brownlee. Brownlee. Mm -hmm. up, up top. I, I'm so excited you're here. Now, you said that uh, you're going to review a sex robot with us. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is news to me. Yeah. No. <laughs> what? Uh, it, that, I, Was I that... We, I emailed you that? You yeah. emailed me. No, you emailed me. Uh, You're like, I have a cool review we might be able to do on your channel because it really wouldn't work on my stuff. Right, right, right. And, uh, and I was like, okay, that'd be kind of fun. And uh, so we'll do that a little bit later, but everybody that's tuned in. But uh, <laughs> I, I, need, I need to let you know. You see, that's for like retention or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I see you. I yeah, see you. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, we boy, need that. Take that, notes. Jimmy, you piece of shit. What, what did he do? He did nothing to you. He I don't know. You. He's trying to make me fat with these cookies. Oh, yeah, true. So I have to let you know something, Mr. Yeah. Brownlee. Sure. Uh, you are partially responsible for one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Explain. Uh, are you familiar with this, maybe? No. Okay. No. Um, we're going to put up a video we had jake tran the youtuber on here uh -huh. okay yeah and jake was explaining how he first got into youtube yeah okay through you oh. and tech videos wow. okay tech videos he said tech remember that <laughs> okay okay, okay. Don't, clearly don't, don't, you can't say that too much don't, he don't, clearly don't establish a bias don't do okay, that okay i was just, just watching a little okay. video okay, okay. leading the witness he's leading, leading the witness. witness i might be leading, leading but just just keep in mind this is one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to me okay i look like a complete fool partially because of you okay on youtube yeah and uh, in high school, I started watching a lot of tech channels like Marquez Brownlee, Linus Tech Tips, and I just got really sold on the idea of being a YouTuber, okay. like that romanticized ideal, like uh, having sponsors, getting free stuff, having yeah. fun on camera, et cetera. Sure. So at the time, I was doing Taekwondo. I was a competitor and coach. Uh, stop. And stop. Did, Don't stop. Just stop. Don't stop. Just stop. You Don't can't stop. stop. Just Don't stop. stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just one second. I just need to know. I just need to know. Objectively, objectively speaking, you're killing what did he say? Just what did he Retention. say? Just he what he said. He was doing Taekwondo as Man, a- Man, come on, bro. <laughs> come <laughs> the fuck on. Roll you the heard tape. Taekwondo? Yeah, wait, why? Roll okay. the tape. Hold Roll on. the tape. You heard Taekwondo. That's, yeah. What do you think he's saying? Go okay. back five seconds, please, just- uh, As a coach, yeah. I did Taekwondo for like five years. What's Taekwondo for us old people? No. <laughs> taekwondo, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's really martial art. Oh, Taekwondo, <laughs> dude. Yeah. I thought yeah. you said yeah. Taekwondo. Tech window? I thought <laughs> that was this. Part of the, come on, Mark. It's I am not taking responsibility for that. Come on, Mark. He's That's telling me you. he's watching tech YouTubers. Okay, like that Marquez Bradley. Yeah. Then he goes, I was doing tech window, right? <laughs> <laughs> As a competitor. He did coach. pivot kind of hard there, but. <laughs> I, yeah, no. But I, I was primed by tech, so I'm thinking tech in my brain. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not the most tech savvy guy, so I'm like, everything is going to be tech from <laughs> yeah, now on. Yeah. And then he throws, you know, f uh, for me for a loop. His and now story, we're in combat sports. He did swerve, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you see why I, in that moment, thought he definitely said tech window? Or he was is a he competitor a fucking idiot? It, no, in the hearing it back and hearing what you heard, I get that you heard it. Thank that's you. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But uh, as someone, I don't. I feel like I've. My dad did taekwondo. I'm familiar a little bit. I've heard the word said maybe more times than I just remember that. That's I've a done thing. taekwondo. Do you? <laughs> do you hear that out loud enough to think about that first over tech window? I guess not. No, I don't think I do. Now, yeah. if you keep going, they fucking laugh at me like really loud, especially oh, yeah. Alex. <laughs> Look at, <laughs> look at. <laughs> <laughs> he called me a dumb fuck for just hearing something wrong. Relax, fuck, man. Relax, just stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. now, 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 that is what you're dealing with here on the podcast. I just okay. want to let you know. All right, all right. Okay. okay. You, That's the level of tech savvy we bring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech yeah, window. Yeah. Just, just curious, what did you think tech window was? I thought it was a competition <laughs> that you could be a coach and a competitor in. And it was you competing about tech stuff. Tech dude. window. Okay. Yeah. How does the window play into that? Uh, yeah. It's more of a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Fair. It, it's, it, that, it's not like an actual literal window. It's like the tech window. Like anything can uh, exist within the tech uh, window. That's the you know? span of all tech things. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Literally what you're saying is what yeah. I was thinking. I get it. Yeah. I now, get it. I get it too. For These sure. guys are fucking racist. <laughs> what? <laughs> racist? Yeah, racist? you are. <laughs> Why couldn't an Asian kid be good at tech? <laughs> <laughs> why, why couldn't you think that? That's where I went with it. You went, you went karate. 
<laughs> Who's doing Taekwondo? <laughs> taekwondo. I didn't. It's two different things. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, I'm way more open-minded. Yeah. It's actually the widest you've ever been. It might have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's That's a right. moment where I go, hold on, hold on, like I could stop time for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, Mr. Brownlee, thank you so much for being here. Listen, we know that you sat down with uh, Barack Obama. We know you sat down with Elon Musk. We Kobe. know you sat down with Kobe, with Bill Gates, all of the Illuminati. And <laughs> you, <laughs> m some people think you're Illuminati. Do you know that? Uh, uh, it's... Who thinks that? Yeah, what? That, I, that, it, I thought that was like the entertainer's tar part of the Illuminati. Oh, you're in the game, my friend. I guess a little bit. I've only been in that room once. I went to the Met Gala once. Whoa. So Whoa. I've been in that room. Whoa. Just to just bring that out to the top of the podcast. But uh, I wouldn't say that those people you mentioned are in that same category, no? So you're saying they're not on your level? No, no, no. That's they, a different... They don't get to go to the Met Gala. I guess I'm separating the Illuminati mm. from Kobe Bryant, mm. I guess. Yeah, I don't think Kobe's uh, yeah. was part of it. But yeah. Met Gala, now that you bring that up... Yeah. Um, oh, look at that. Yeah, we can talk about you're yeah. cute. I see you. You're you. cute, Marquez. That is the I'm best I've ever looked. Oh, okay. you, you talked to Emma? Yep, at oh, the top. Oh, we see you. Who's Emma? Come on, Come on Emma Chamberlain. Oh, Emma Chamberlain, you are a boomer. Two Come types on. of people, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch YouTube right White now? and black. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, yeah. No, that's the YouTube right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Emma Chamberlain is one of the preeminent YouTubers, dude. Yeah. yeah did I, she stop making I videos? I like her. She did. Well, she she makes less videos from what I understand. Okay. See, she fell off. That's why. You think she fell off? No, that's what he just well, said. Well, I think a lot of people think it, it's like a graduation. A lot of people aim Ooh. to do YouTube to, to to let go of that to the next thing. Mm. And I think Emma's, that's a Vogue video she's in. She's she's hosting interviews at the top of the red carpet of the Met Gala for Vogue. That's a graduation for her. Yeah. You, but, you don't. But where are people watching those videos? YouTube.com. That's a that's a great point, and that's why I make YouTube videos. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. That. Is. What is the ultimate goal with you? Ah man, I if you asked me this five years ago, I would have had a different answer. Ten years ago, I would have had a different answer. But I just want to make videos that people want to watch. Yeah. And I don't. I'm not tied to YouTube. YouTube is where I go to watch videos. So that's where I make videos. Same. But if that changed, I would also do videos for that. You still you ever see yourself stepping out of the tech window and into anything <laughs> maybe different <laughs> different realms? It's it's always been what I'm interested in. See how I, easy it is to understand <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I I like tech, so that was a natural thing, but I'm also interested in cars and I started doing car videos and like I can step out in different things, which is fun. Uh, so yeah, I would skin do skincare, you got a great stuff. fucking skin. I've been looking oh, at yeah. it. Saying that, it's I incredible. I I'll take it. Mm. Uh, I don't do anything special, so Black Wait a minute, cars, 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 because I know yeah. that yours is not good. His is you don't your skin is shit actually. I'm mixed. His skin is gorgeous. I'm mixed. So it's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, I got half good skin. Yeah, you got Puerto Rican wrinkles yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens, bro. I, I guess <laughs> pastel is on my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so with the cars, because I know that you were talking to Elon, I was watching that conversation. Now, I've also been told that you've had some difficulty with your Tesla. Did you ever bring that up with Elon? Uh, not specifically, but he's probably aware because I made a video about it. And? Any response? Any text from him? Like Not directly. I mean, this was also 2016 when I had an issue with an early Tesla Model S. Okay. And I think what happens is people give a little bit more benefit of the doubt to a newer company like Tesla mm. when they're new. Now mm. that they're not new, you don't expect that type of stuff to happen. Like Rivian just had a similar thing. Rivian's a new this car the company, truck, the it was truck. Like, yeah. Where the suspension started breaking. Yeah. And this is, you know, it makes headlines and everyone freaks out about it, but it's like, I don't expect that from Volvo. Yeah. Mercedes, Audi. Yeah. So yeah, they had an early blip and I was okay with dealing with that. There's a, I bought a fake Porsche. It's fake. A, a replica Porsche. It says Porsche Speedster. Do you know what those cars are? It's, not a, it's not a Porsche? No, it's basically like a Volkswagen body that they chop in to make a new Porsche. These Porsches are half a million dollars. I don't have half a million okay. dollars to be buying a fucking car of a wife. So, <laughs> but the point is, is I was being told, I was being told by a friend, he was like, listen, here's the problem. When you have some one person make a car, mm -hmm. right? There's always going to be problems. I go, what do you mean there's always going to be problems? That's one person looking at every single detail. He goes, no, 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 scale. And is Exactly. Yeah. Scale is where the problems go away. Yep. Yeah. I really like McLarens, and McLaren has a terrible reputation for quality control because yeah. they're hand-built. Yeah. Mm. That's tough. And the other thing with the McLaren is, like, don't you need to pay for a software update two years later? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, they have pretty garbage software, so I imagine 
they're not doing too hot as far as like pushing free great OTA software updates to cars. Yeah. But also, yeah, cars are tech now. They're connected yeah. to the internet. It's a computer on wheels. They download software updates. Mm-hmm. They get better features over time. Sometimes they get faster. Wait, like, really? Yeah, they'll just improve the torque curve because they figured out new things they could do with traction control. That's what Tesla will the do. The computers will get better at understanding traction and they'll get faster, which is amazing. <laughs> but Whoa. yeah, McLarens are, are more like hardcore... Less software <laughs> drivers. So in the cars. middle of driving, your car can get faster. Not in the middle of driving. Your phone gets a software update. <laughs> if your foot goes like that, then it will. I've tried yeah. that. No, no, no. <laughs> Not <laughs> on my fake port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think the Volkswagen will do it. Oh, but okay. if, yeah, if yeah, your it's foot like your goes phone. like that. Yeah. You got a max speed of 50 on that <laughs> bad boy. Yeah. Bro. Bro, I was pe- fast and I could pedal with half. your feet, dude. You got to have to do it <laughs> down the highway. <laughs> Well, no, I was watching. It was funny you say that about the cars because I was watching that old uh, that old uh, pod that you did with Rogan, which was great. You guys have a great energy together, especially because you see like uh, Rogan's obsession. Yeah, well, like Rogan is an obsessive dude, right? Yep. If it's about elk shooting, it's about fucking bow and arrows, about tech, he's all in. Yep. But when you guys were talking about the phones, there's always been like that theory that once Apple comes out with a new phone, they start fucking with your old one. Right. But you had an interesting perspective on it. You were like, the bad. It was something about like the CPU. Yes. Is gonna. Falter if you don't. Every every one of these crazy headlines always has both sides, and it's so easy to just look at our side, which is new phone comes out, my two sh- new phones come out, yeah. my shit gets slower. Yeah. That's dumb. Okay, the other side is Apple wants theoretically, and you have to hear yeah. this out from like like in good faith. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah Apple yeah, yeah. <laughs> realizes that they want to make great phones, and these batteries are not that amazing that they can hold the same voltage for years and years and years. So after a year or two. They're going to start asking less of the battery. They're going to voltage down the CPU a little bit so that the battery can keep giving you all-day battery life, but the CPU is a little slower. But now you still have all-day battery on a two-year-old phone. Because they figure you would rather more battery than a slightly faster two-year-old phone. Now, what happens when it feels like the battery's also going away? Yeah, it will. And then your phone just feels old. Yeah. And then you hopefully, so the idea is like get a new battery, not a whole new phone. Mm. If you need a new CPU, that's way different from just replacing the battery. Yeah. So just get a new battery. It'll feel like a new phone. Maybe it, it'll start pushing the same voltages as when it was brand new. It'll be yeah. a fast phone again. Yeah. But Apple's not telling people that. Yeah. So you hear the other side, which is the headline, which is, yes, your phone is actually slower. Yeah. And that sucks. Now, what is your beef with Apple? I don't really have any I'm getting beef. blasted with green text every time we talk. Oh, that's funny. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. not beef. That's just my current daily driver preference. I carry two phones, by the way. Okay, let me see. Let's so see I what have, we're what do you want to? I want to see what we wear. Okay, okay. that right. phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You got two phones. Now, How does your girl feel about this? No, I've always had two phones. So <laughs> this is, so oh, an Android phone. into the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's, that's how they want. Phone. Yo, no, stay so. ready so you don't got to get ready. So Android phone, iPhone. The thing is, I test and I use tons of phones. And in order to be familiar with Android's ecosystem, I'm constantly testing a bunch of different Android phones. New iPhone comes out. If I haven't used an iPhone in a year, it's kind of hard to remember and test and and get that context because it's a very different world. Mm -hmm. So I'm also always using an iPhone. I have these phones on and on. Oh, I scratched it. On and (laughs) using them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so when the new iPhone comes out, that's my pocket. When a new Android phone comes out, that's my pocket. So Now what's better? So my primary phone number is the Android SIM, because I pop the SIM card out and move it between a bunch of different phones. And then I also have a secondary SIM card that most people don't have this number, but it also, it's a full SIM card, and it's also a fully working iPhone. Uh, which, one, which one got yeah. the dating apps, bro? Which one got <laughs> the hose in it? This one is all my contacts. <laughs> <laughs> But the family FaceTime, the like, the iMessage, the people who get mad about the green bubbles, I guess I'll give you the other number if you really want it. Yeah. But yeah. You didn't get the Apple privilege off rip. You saw that? You yeah, had to complain a little. Yeah, you had to earn that. Toy. You got to You got the that. default. You got I did the default. Get default. <laughs> but if you if you yeah, came, bro, I started getting get bullied there. on my side. <laughs> <show. laughs> hey, You're a side bitch over there. Yeah. I really am. You're on a side bitch phone, bro. Can't even text him on a plane. Hit me when you land. Yeah, that's fair. And the SMS. Golly. But if man. you'd started with like FaceTime or something that I could only do with iMessage, I'd be like, all right, well that's, oh, well, that's smart. So that's so you you lead with that, then you get the blue bubble. Mm. But most people don't. Do you think that that was one of the smartest things that Apple ever did? It's definitely one of the most valuable things to them right now. Yeah. For sure. But don't they always do that? Don't they always do these little things to like create other? Oh, yeah. To protect no, yeah. their brand? They know it's pop- It's powerful. Yeah. It's like a, you've heard about these, this bullying that like kids these days have to have. In America, I should specify, because people watch these videos and I talk about this all the time. In other countries, this is not nearly as much of a thing. But in the U.S., where 90% of kids 
their first phone is an iPhone and they grow up with the iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, you will get bullied for it. And you will be excluded from group chats. I would and you'll never get the message like about that. how you don't have a green bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd never do that. And that's yeah. rough. That was the first thing I said to you. At that. <laughs> the first thing you said. Hey, I it's Marquette Brownlee. I'm like, the fuck is this green <laughs> shit? <laughs> you put in your special. Thing. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That is fucked up that we bully in that way. So is yeah, WhatsApp yeah. the biggest threat to iMessage? Because in other countries, they message on WhatsApp, so there is no color. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 there's no othering. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No, WhatsApp is way bigger than iMessage in all these other countries. So iMessage is like, it would be nice if people used it but like people just use whatsapp period exactly so yeah, that whatsapp shit is wild annoying it's like there's five or it's six different better. apps now because if you talk to somebody in whatsapp land and you talk to somebody in in text message land you have an iMessage person there's just like seven or eight apps you could use to talk to people which is annoying and then google will make three or four more just because that's what they do all the time mm. uh yeah, it's just if you're, have to pick if you're Indian, WhatsApp is everything. It's yeah. texting, it's Facebook, it's all the spam threads. They just go on WhatsApp. It's mm. crazy. Isn't it banking too, or something crazy? They have they like try a lot. To incorporate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. I don't know that. I'm not Indian enough for that. <laughs> it's <laughs> like texting me. <laughs> like Meta, Meta does a lot of things, like Facebook, obviously. And I think when they realized how important a communication app is, and they bought WhatsApp, that mm. was a major move for them mm. because they they know a lot more about a lot of people because of WhatsApp. Uh, whoa. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean by that? Well, Facebook is like collect all the information, sell all the ads. Yeah. And now. Okay, Facebook starts to decrease in popularity, but what's coming up? Instagram? Okay, we buy that. Yeah. Now we have a lot, a lot of information. They don't tend to make a unique product. They tend to either buy it or copy something else that did really well. Yeah. Uh, and WhatsApp, super popular. Yeah, we, we would love to have that information about people. Now the and information so is reading the texts? No, I think it's encrypted still, but still they, they like to know like- When you're texting. When you're mm, doing yeah. things online, they can still serve you ads. They can do things with WhatsApp information, but it's not like, you know- they didn't like invent something new to get people to use it. They yeah. just saw what was going well and bought it. Is is uh, the metaverse a big fat fucking failure for Mark Zuckerberg? Or I'm working on this there? video. I'm oh, working on this yeah. video. Drop it. Drop okay. it. Give please, us an exclusive. Please. So the metaverse. If you give us this, you don't have to fuck a robot. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Wait, we get to fuck it? <laughs> Oh, well, Damn. we are still going to fuck it. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> Come on. I'm first. Metaverse. Metaverse. <laughs> it is. Uh, okay. So. I might just just say what I was going to say in my video. Oh, let's go. Which is that there's two parts again. I think the tech is really cool. Anytime someone asks me what's the future of tech, VR always comes up. Like AR, VR, something with the glasses and the projections and seeing stuff. It just seems like the natural future. Uh, And then I think Meta slash Facebook slash Zuck kind of got shafted in the first half of the internet, which is like... It runs on ads, Google ads, basically. It runs on devices. They don't make devices. And in order to sell ads, they need to track you. And, you know, every time we had that ask app not to track button pop yeah. up on iPhones, like yeah. that really screwed Facebook. Yeah. And I think they're looking forward at, like, what's the future really going to be? It seems like it's VR and AR. Okay, let's pivot the entire ship and commit to that future. Huge move. Just the whole thing. Yeah. And we have enough money to pour into this that even if you're not really sure, if you're a skeptic, if you're on the edges, we're, we'll pour money into whatever you were you know, hesitant about to make it good enough for it to be the future. And then when we have this like foundation of the internet 2.0, which is this metaverse that they're imagining people spend lots of time in, then Apple can't screw them over or Google can't take the upper hand because they sell all the ads. It'll be the Facebook-dominated thing. And that would suck. (laughs) Because one company dominating the entire internet and having control over the whole foundation of what we're all doing online is a terrible idea. Yeah. Yeah. But that's their vision. That's their competitive Ah, so they've been limited now, and they're like, let's get ahead of this so that they can't limit us I think they see the trajectory of of Facebook.com going like this, Yeah. Mm. and they have infinite dollars to just look for the next thing and fully commit to it. Mm. And what do you think of that bet? Um, I I think it's really interesting. So I've seen some really cool demos of like things that re- work really well. There's the Quest Pro headset yeah. that I got to try, which is like, it has this pass-through mode and it'll track your computer and you're paired to your computer. So you put it on and it still shows you your entire environment, but then your computer on the desk, three more monitors will pop out of it and you get to use it just like a normal computer. Wild. And like the tech, it's a little bit glitchy. It's a little buggy. It's not the sharpest thing in the world. But like this idea of like, 
I have three monitors in front of me in the on the train, place. wherever yeah, I want to go, just yeah. bring the headset with me is like, I get why they think that's the future. Mm. And they're going to pour billions and billions of dollars into that until it's great. Mm. I, I, oh, sorry, real quick. I have one, uh, I don't want to call it like a criticism, but one thing I noticed, I got the goggles, right? My wife and I have them. The Quest? This is, uh, yeah, yeah, is I, one of the VR headsets? I think it you was. Have Oculus, I think. Oculus, Oculus Quest, yeah. yeah. Now the Meta Quest, because they bought them too. Right. <laughs> uh, so, and my wife hated it. I'm loving it. I'm watching like climbing videos. It's me and Alex Honnold yep. and I'm just looking down. I'm like, it's terrifying, whatever. <laughs> but what an interesting thing happened, which is different than like watching a TV uh, or a basketball game and zoning out or like playing video games and kind of zoning out. It completely isolates you from your partner. The goggles do. Yeah. And I think that there's a hiccup there that they're not noticing, which is you can have a headset on playing Call of Duty and your wife's over there, but you can still talk about what you need to do that day and the things you need to go get. And do you like this outfit? Do you like this? Should we go here? Once those fucking goggles go on, yeah. you're in a different world, literally, and that's the point. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna ha there's gonna be friction relationship-wise. So there's the idea of the metaverse, we're all putting on headsets and we're in there together. But that if is... she doesn't buy in to climbing with Alex Honnold, like me, yeah. or surfing, at Jaws with Shane Dorian <laughs> and Kyle Lenny, <laughs> you know, if she's in doing her thing, mm -hmm. right? Now we're not in the world together and we're not spending that like time together. Couples yes. do this a lot where it's like, we're doing something together, we might not be talking. I, and I think that there's gonna be some friction with that. They have okay. to figure that out. That. So this is so there's two, exactly. there's two things I keep saying, which is VR and AR. VR, virtual reality, is you put the headset on and you're immersed in a different world, which is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. AR a little bit different, is taking the reality around you and augmenting it a little bit, augmented reality. Add a screen to the wall, add the weather in front of you. This is what you're talking about, the two other screens. Yes, so right now in 2022, the tech that we have is you putting a big ass headset on and being isolated from the world. I think Meta's idea is if we put enough money into this, it miniaturizes over and over and over again. It's got cameras, it's got sensors. Suddenly it looks like I'm just wearing glasses. I see the whole world, but I also get the VR experience. The AR experience is everywhere. Yeah. And Maybe that's possible. So the someday. Oculus is like the first cell phone? Exactly. We look back at that, that and we're like, brick. that is absurd. I don't want to carry this thing everywhere. There's no future to this brick in my car. But if I'm folding it, throwing it in my jacket, suddenly it makes sense. And imagine whoever, Nokia, had been working on the cell phone for 50 years right. before anybody else started. Right. Yeah. Is it avoidable that Meta takes over the metaverse completely? So I think there's a couple other companies that have enough money and enough foresight to start to compete, I think everyone expects Apple to have a headset in the next year. Mm. I think we're gonna see that. And they're great at hardware. Apple's great at hardware and they're great at ecosystem. So you better believe they're worried about like, everyone who has an iPhone is gonna want the Apple headset, mm. not the other headset. Mm. And Apple, just like they do with the bubbles, there will be Apple's headset yeah. and the others, Yeah, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a thing you can expect. Google, you know, they've got the money and the tech and the software. Creating other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talk about this all the time, the ecosystem and the walls that they build, yeah. the figurative yeah. walls. That's iMessage, FaceTime, all that stuff. charger, right? It's like, the do you charger. have an Apple charger? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a couple companies close mm -hmm. that are about to do some stuff. But <laughs> Meta is the one that's, like, at the top of the mountain yelling about the future that we all see. Yeah. So, But yeah. it feels like we're not exactly buying in. Just yet. I like what it's you hard. described about just the regular glasses that you put on. Yeah. I think that would be really interesting. Do you think people would- partnership with Ray-Ban? Did you see those? Oh, It no. looks like mm -hmm. your normal way. And they just look like, oh, that's the, cool. Do yeah, you they're see, like at both ends of it. There's like the Oculus and there's the Ray-Bans, which is like just a camera. Yeah. And they're like, we get this closer to Oculus. We get Oculus closer to this. Then we're good. We get something good in the middle. All right, guys, we're going to take a break real quick so I can tell you about Keeps. Look, let's be honest. You're getting older. Your hair is probably thinning. Two out of every three men are gonna experience some form of baldness, but you don't have to anymore, it's a choice. So fix your fucking scalp. Take Keeps, I'm on it. Schultz is on it, that's why he's not here. He's probably going to get Keeps right now. Keeps offers a simple, affordable, and stress-free way to keep your hair. They have convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. They have 24 seven care and support, and it's low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to treat hair loss. Keeps has everything your hair needs delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging, which is important because you are not so discreetly going bald. 
So if you are ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash flagrant to receive your first month of treatment for free. That means you stop going bald for one month for free at K-E-E-P-S dot com slash flagrant. Get your first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break so I can tell you about Freshly. Fellas, you are wasting time cooking. You have better things to do, like make money. Go out there, have a job. Ladies, this goes for you too. Outsource jobs you can outsource and Freshly makes that easy. I love their protein packed chicken parm. I'm using it. Everybody here is using it. I'm getting less fat every day, I hope. If not, I'll jump off of a fucking building. Anyway, Freshly delivers delicious, <laughs> healthy meals to you. Freshly <laughs> delivers delicious, healthy meals to you. Get delicious, nutritious, prepared meals delivered right to your door. It is food made easy for everyone. It fits your lifestyle and there are plans tailored to every diet need. It is convenient and fresh. Skip the grocery shopping. Skip the dirty dishes. Skip pulling out bullshit frozen dinners with a bunch of preservatives in it. Go with Freshly. So, having one less thing on your plate never tasted so good. Take advantage of Freshly's end of summer sale and score a deal. $125 off your first five orders. That's a lot of money. $125 $125 off your first five orders at Freshly.com slash flagrant when you order today. Again, that is Freshly.com slash flagrant. Freshly.com slash flagrant for $125 off your first five orders. Fuck, that's generous. Let's get back to the show. And do you see people wearing them at all times? Like, how does the regular interaction work outside of, like, the workspace? Yeah, I think, so, Apple, or, sorry, Meta would like us to all just have them on like all day. They want people to work in the metaverse. They want people to collaborate and meet and hang out with friends in the metaverse. And everyone's got the headsets on all the time. You've seen Ready Player One. Yeah. Kind of just like just exactly like that. That yeah. is what you think the future is. Yeah. It, that's, the, that's the future I keep picturing whenever they describe how much time they want us to spend with the headsets Which on. seems dystopian, right? I think, though, we still have to think of how much smaller and less uh, immersive the headsets can be. I think we'll we'll get these crazy weird Wally moments where we're like, I don't want to have this headset on all day. This reminds me of a dystopian future I don't like. Mm. But if the tech gets good enough and small enough, and it is just like you can hit a button on your glasses and it turns on and then it goes away, and it's like a cool thing you can have, then people will be more willing to give it a shot mm. and use it sometimes. Mm-hmm. I think they want us to spend all day in it though. Yeah, because if you and think that's tough. if you think of your phone time, your screen time is yeah. a lot of screen time. Seven, eight, six hours, nine hours a day. Yeah. Imagine augmenting it where I don't even, this is a better reality than when I'm in. That's why I don't do the Apple Watch. All these guys have the Apple Watch, but. It keeps me off my phone, actually. Same thing. Yeah. Does Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Take your phone out less. Well, but it drops, but you're looking at this all day. Not all day. Just when I get a text. What happens a lot of times when I get a text personally, I look at the text and then, oh, I'm in a wormhole of other things I can look at. Oh. And I'll just check Instagram because it's already open. That barrier is so much smaller. So if you have the watch on, that's like a barrier. You don't take your phone out of your pocket. I get a, I get a text. I check it. I don't reply. It's over. And then you or don't do. scroll. And yeah. I don't because if I take my, I get the message. I feel the vibration. I take the phone out of my pocket. Suddenly I'm it's in. It's over. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I'm on TikTok already. Like Dude, that's my how wife this morning this. asked me to uh, do do a thing for her, right? And she has to do this every single time. She goes, Andrew, could you ask about that thing? I take out my phone, and then 30 seconds later, she goes. Did you ask about the thing? <laughs> and I'm on like Brazzers or something. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I'm asking about it neither, yeah, yeah, But it's yeah, so yeah. true. You're in a wormhole right? now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. And I didn't notice how sucked in I was without even realizing like how secondary the movements were until I put the time limit things on. Oh, my gosh. And I knew that it was limited. Yeah. But my, my thumb would just naturally go and click on the icon. Isn't that <laughs> yeah. crazy? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? My thumb is just has a mind it's of its, its own. own. It's not my fault. And yeah. you like memorize exactly where the icons are on your home screen. And it's just there. You don't even think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's these there's these folding phones now. These flip phones yeah. where it's like that little extra barrier of like, you know, there's a screen on the outside, but then you open it and it's the whole phone. So you 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 don't open it, but you get the text and you see it on the outside. And then you just dismiss it and don't open the phone. Because the second you open the phone, you're in. It's over. It's in. And was that their idea? They want to reduce the amount of time? I don't think or? that's the primary. I think it's just a cool tech. That's one of the things I noticed when using a folding phone is I started using my phone less. Or at least getting wasting time hours in less. So how, how do you do less phone time? How do you get caught or stop yourself from getting caught up in the scroll? Personally? Yeah. Uh, my goal... My only thing that I've started doing like a few months ago is I start my day without my phone. So I think it's easy to just endlessly scroll and then 
I get like existential about it and I zoom out and I just like see myself on the couch just like doing nothing. <laughs> it sucks. So I, I like getting out of bed, feet on the ground, start the day without touching the phone. Yeah. My watch wakes me up actually. It just like taps me on the wrist and I just go, all right, time to get up. Because as soon as I like take the phone off, hit the alarm, stop button, suddenly I'm right where I was going to be with this. Mm-hmm. So I that's my thing that I, I think works kind of well. It's really hard at night to like, because I, I have this, I want to get through all my notifications and emails and everything before I put it down. Yeah. And so I'm like sitting in bed, finishing up, and then suddenly I'm scrolling and I yeah. forgot that I was just about to sleep. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that part sucks. But that's what I. Try. How long in the morning without the phone? Uh, just till I get downstairs to like start my day. Can I oh. ask if you had to guess your average screen time? Because it's easy to say yeah. it's part of my job. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's, I do that. My job. That's not our even, bullshit excuse yeah. to ourselves. Yeah. Well, no, yeah I, I know work my, on the internet. Yeah. 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 No, it's a lot. It's like seven hours a day. Yeah. It has to be. Do you think, um, I know when Google Glass launched and also with the Ray-Bans, like the yeah. biggest thing for me was like, it's one thing to tap into a virtual world. It's another thing to be pointing a camera at someone else's face. And I think like, <laughs> yeah. like get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. And that camera is the thing that I think a lot of people, that'll be the yeah. big pushback. Yo, yeah. that's a great point. How it affects social interactions when people constantly think that they're being recorded. Yeah. Yeah, that would make me incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, it, it was a and Google Glass was twenty twelve. Yeah, Think about remember that? cameras on your face in twenty twelve. Like that, <laughs> that, that had no shot. Oh, yeah. I had no face. shot. Nerd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was in college at the time, and I even had a pair of them. And I was like, "All right, time to give this, you know, possible future a shot." And I'm like, I walk into class with this one. I'm like, I hate myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else hated you too. Yeah, like, but think yeah. about like the fight videos and stuff. Like we oh, have so many crazy. good videos. Yeah. yeah. Yo, a bit of a pivot. You just brought up college. You were basically basically famous in college. What is that experience like for you? Talk about the hose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that unboxing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you think my male female percentage viewership is? 70 30 female judging by your skin, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? 90 10? That would be nice. 95 okay, 5. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. yeah. So you know, college is cool. Future is female, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I went to a tech school. I went to, uh, you know, I think the tech audience too is like, I can relate. Like, we don't go out much. I'm not like in the streets or anything like that. I'm on campus most of the time. So, inevitably, yeah, there probably were a few classmates that like knew about the videos, but it you didn't. You said you had a professor ask you, why haven't you dropped out yet? In my senior year, I did by that point have like a pretty visible channel. And I, have, I had a professor in a, uh, I think it was a business class or social media class or something like that, ask like, he, he literally just asked like, I'm, I'm not sure why you haven't dropped out and like done that full time. And I was like, well, I'm three, thir- 35 minutes from like finishing the entire college career. Yeah. Like I might as well just get yeah. to the end. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't actually that crazy. I, I've gone back to campus actually since then, but it wasn't actually that crazy. Yeah, I imagine it's it's probably what a lot of us go through is like there's certain parts of the world where you're incredibly famous. Like if you're walking, if Local. you're in an Apple store, people are recognizing you. You know what I mean? Yep. If you're at the strip club, nobody. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great I had a great moment. So the YouTube Creator Summit every year is like the yeah. in North America, the top hundred creators all go to one place and YouTube talks to us and explains things and it's great. And inevitably every year they go like, while you're here, don't post on social media like where we are because like it's a private event and also like your fans will come like that's how this works so we just want you to know don't post about the hotel but inevitably somebody does and I just remember we were at this hotel in Brooklyn and it was the last day and we were all about to leave and I called my Uber and I looked outside the front door of the hotel and there was like 200 screaming little girls like we want to see whoever they found out was here I was like, this, that's going to be rough. I'm not excited for this. And uh, my Uber pulls out on the street behind them, and I walk out the door, and I just walk right through the middle of them, and none of them even blink. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like Moses. They yeah, all just like walk right through. And I was like, that's, I know my audience, and yeah. this is not my audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, man. Now, I, I uh, okay, I had a thing that I did, but are you familiar with uh, TikTok? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. thoughts on TikTok real quick. Yeah, it's, it's kind of taken over the world a little bit. Um, so I have made TikToks. Yeah. The most viewed piece of content I've ever made is a TikTok. Hmm. Hmm. But. How many views? 
35 million views. Jesus. The thing about tech is it's not like universal enough to get like 100, 200 million views, but that's still a lot of views for a piece of tech, yeah. you know? And it was an LG phone. Like that's crazy. Um, but that's TikTok's algorithm at work is it's willing to surface things and show people things that just to try it, just to see yeah. if they're interested. And if it hooks, it hooks. But um, they are behind on the monetization right. and the creator creature comforts that YouTube has been so good at for so long. Yeah. And so YouTube is going to let us monetize shorts now next year. They're going to they're showing shorts to people all the time. Yeah. They've kind of started to set the bait for full time TikTokers to become YouTubers. And why wouldn't they? There's way more yeah. money on YouTube. Uh, exactly. I think I think shorts in the long run beats out on TikTok. I think TikTok becomes redundant. So I think they can exist at the same time until one of them becomes less cool. Yeah. Because right now you open your phone, you open up TikTok, and you just know what to expect when you land there. YouTube is like this app with a bunch of stuff yeah. and shorts. So if you're in the shorts experience, I think people just instinctively launch TikTok because that's what they want. Yeah. But yes, it is really easy to just drop right into shorts and see all the same type of stuff and get the same dopamine hit and the same endless scrolling. Yeah. And I think that's TikTok great sounds for better too. Like language plays a part in this yeah. a little bit. Like it let's is watch great. A, it was like Uber sounds better than Lyft, right? Mm. And like let's make some TikToks. Let's watch some TikToks. Let's make some shorts. Mm. Like what do you Reels? Reels? Halfway. Better than shorts, probably. <laughs> sure. But yeah. like short, I don't I don't love the name of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that being said, I think that YouTube is where everybody goes. I mean, that's our big bet. It was your bet. You know, yeah. it's, it's like where everybody's going for not only content, but also information. So yeah. while you're already there, you get that dopamine hit from these TikToks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you do you feel pressure? Because you've made, you have, I always ask creators about this. You you make longer videos than I make. I mean, Podcasts think, of a, think of a special. Think of the longest, yep. the most creative stuff you do. Do you feel pressure because of how popular short form stuff is? To either adapt or like cut down stuff for shorts or try shorts or any I love of that. It because it allows me to repurpose content. Interesting. So yeah. if I have a five minute joke that can be two or three one minute TikToks clips. or reels or clips, now I'm getting to use every part of the buffalo. Yeah. You know, so okay. for me it's great. And it's also like I think our whole our whole strategy was I can hook you with a minute. I'm not hooking you with an hour. Right. Like everybody will give you 60 seconds of their time. Yeah. They might not give you an hour. So if I get three 60 seconds of your time, maybe you'll tap into the hour. That's fair. Mm -hmm. So I use it as like a feeder system. It's yeah. like the top of the funnel. If they like enough shorts, they'll watch longer stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But there was yeah. even a time for you where you would make short, like you would have like short interactions and they would be too short to be like a five minute YouTube video. Yeah. yeah. And you'd be like, ah, oh, we just can't put it out. Yeah. It's not yeah. long enough. That. Yeah. Like th that was recent history. Yeah, yeah. 90 seconds, it would be a very funny thing, but it's like, well, nobody's watching a 90 second. Right. Yeah. We noticed that like the, the sweet spot for the videos, if we were putting out like a joke, was like between like three and six minutes or yeah. something like that. Something, at the time, yeah. At the time, right? So when we put out something that was maybe like 47 seconds, diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. But then when we were able to throw that shit up on Instagram or now shorts. Yeah. 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 It's kind of the same thing. We had a lot of, I'm, I make like, the average length of my videos has gone up, but it, it was like a five minute video and now yeah. it's like a nine, 10, 11, 12 minute video. Yeah. And I have lots of ideas where I'm like, this is, I have thoughts on it, but it's not a five-minute video. Yep. Yeah. It's just a few. It's not enough for a video. But I've watched a few of your shorts. I really like your shorts. We've had, those are some of the ideas that we've gone, you know what? This is 60 seconds. Yep. And then we can turn it into a thing that maybe is the top of the funnel. And it's similar enough to the longer videos that it can maybe convert. We're still yeah. working on that. YouTube's still working on that. But I think that that's another advantage over TikTok, where if you do other stuff, it works. I, I uh, Whenever I have a guest on and I'm starting to get into, uh, you know, trying to understand like who they are so we can have this conversation. Mm. The, a podcast, listening to you on a podcast is going to be the most fruitful for me sure. because it's hard to pretend for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Like everybody can do 60 seconds where they're like on script and they get out this version of themselves that they wish that they were. Yeah. But an hour, two hours, you get the real sense of like who that person is. Yep. So that's like where I get sense of person. But I'm always looking at myself like, what am I going to first for a guest? And the first few videos I watched of yours were shorts. And those huh. naturally took me into... Watching your long videos, or mm -hmm. longer videos. Yeah. I watched a few like reviews, but that wasn't my intention. I was gonna watch you on a pod, and yeah. the shorts popped up, and then because of the shorts, I watched a longer video. That's the ideal. That's exactly what YouTube tells us they're going to have happen more often, and, and I'm fucking, hoping it does. 
it, it tricked me and I know that yeah. that's the strategy. <laughs> yeah. Well, couldn't yeah. YouTube, like I agree that TikTok's benefit is that it's the second you open the app, you're getting fed content. Whereas cool. with YouTube, you're getting fed choices and choices are paralyzing. Yeah. So I wonder if YouTube could optimize the UI so that well, as soon as you open it, depending on your consumption preference, Ooh, it shows you it. a short yep. or it shows you a long form MKBHD video. But, but, but they, have, right. they have started to do that. You notice yeah. like in the feed, they'll exactly. start playing the video if you sit on it long enough. But the enough. second you open it. Okay, exactly. the second you open the app right now, I think they still, they're probably doing this now, is they have uh, like one or two long form thumbnails at the top and then they'll peak a little shorts tab right mm -hmm. above that. And if you get uh, right into that short, it's over. you're in. Uh, I don't think they can open with the shorts because YouTube's library is still mostly long form stuff and that's mm -hmm. the bread and butter of YouTube. But they are sneaking shorts in there. It's yeah. in the recommended a little bit. Yeah. It's on the homepage, like half a scroll down. Yeah. So it's they're they're integrating it, but I don't know if they'll fully dive. I think you get shorts because you actually watch shorts more. Yeah, and that's yeah. why you probably got shorts of his first because I've never got recommended a yeah, short. Yeah, I don't. I don't Interesting. Yeah. I love shorts. Yeah, I was just scrolling through and maybe they started to pop up. But oh, the, the reason why I asked you about TikTok is because I went on a on a rant on on Brilliant Idiots, a show I do with Charlemagne the God. Yeah, and about how dangerous it was to have like another country's tech influencing us, mm -hmm. right? And like. Basically, the idea was you have another country that can gear the algorithm to reward whatever behavior they want, and they could reward behavior that might not be beneficial to the next generation of Americans or whatever whatever other country, and that's why it's dangerous. Yeah. And then I said that in China, the algorithm is different. It rewards not dumb dancing, but it rewards you know engineering goals and all these other things. Now, this got picked up mm. by politicians running for office. Yeah. It got picked up by... State Department people. It yeah. got picked up by all these who. I have to tell you something. I made this up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted no, no, no. to come clean to everybody. I, I made that up completely. I have no proof whatsoever. It just sounded good and I was passionate. And the show is called Brilliant Idiots. Yeah. And it sounds like they something they would out. do. They Exa left that out. Yeah. yeah, they definitely cut that. Yeah. But I remember, I remember people sending me stuff of a literal politician going, This is how the algorithm <laughs> works in China. This is how it works in America. And I was like, Oh boy, I gotta be careful. Yeah. <laughs> so is there any truth to my okay. absolute bullshit? Okay, I think so there is. I think what you're observing <laughs> is true, but the algorithm, I would I would step back because the algorithm from any slash all of these companies, I would always assume to be geared to either make them as much money as possible or maximize your time on the site, happiness on the site, which inevitably keeps you coming back and makes them more money. It's always to keep you on their site. One point of pushback potentially, China is everything serves the government. It's mm -hmm. not about capitalistic making as much money as possible. Yeah. And they also restrict the access to most of the other internet. So if this is the internet I have, why don't we just funnel them the thing that's gonna make the best Chinese citizens? Yes, I think, if you even though look at like Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, what they want is you on the site for a long time scrolling, engaging with a lot of stuff. And I think even with ByteDance, when they, when they make their algorithm as good as possible, it's so good because it keeps you engaged. ByteDance is the company that owns that TikTok. That owns TikTok. Right? Yeah. And so I think in different places where people have different behaviors, that algorithm feeds them different things because they are responding and engaging with different things. So if those cheesy dances get engagement in the U.S., mm. then it'll keep serving them more of that. Mm. If it doesn't get engagement somewhere else, it's not like they decided, I don't want you to see these dances. No, they'll show you the dances if you click on them. But they're not engaging with them as much, and it's, it's whatever they engage with is amplified. Now, now, what if getting a reaction and a positive reaction becomes part of our culture? So seeking that validation of views is more important than the thing you're doing to get the views. That's very real. Right? Very so real. if that's the case, won't people do whatever that is to do it? Mm -hmm. And can't you manipulate them based on feeding them, I don't want to say fake views, but making sure that the TikTok is in the search way more than it needs to be? Yeah. It is a theoretical thing that they could do, right? Like if, if they decided one day that their ultimate goal was to ruin some election as a company for whatever reason, they could, at the expense of the rest of their engagement, decide to feed certain people certain things. But I think still, like, most of these companies, when they're, when they're optimizing, trying to make the best product, they're competitive, they're trying to beat the other companies at their, That's true. their other products. That's true. If your products. app is boring, they're going to get off. Exactly. If you start showing them a bunch of stuff they're not as interested in, or if you're, the algorithm is ruined, and I was seeing all these videos I liked, and then suddenly it changed one day, but the others still seem pretty good. Like, all this stuff also factors in, and 
I think that's what they care about the most. I think they want to be the best. Okay, so let's assume they do want to be the, the best and they are incredibly competitive and there is competition out there. It's like I could go on Instagram, I could go on TikTok, I can go on shorts. You have to do, you have to give me what I want ultimately. Yep. You have to meet me there. All right. Is there danger though in not being able to curate the algorithm? Like I'm wondering if they've seen what's happened in America and China, right? You've seen how powerful these tech corporations have gotten mm -hmm. and they go, we're not about to let that happen in China. That's why Jack Ma disappears for a month. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah. if they're seeing the, the power and influence of American tech companies, yeah, and how like they have to be integrated in the government, but almost like the government's like, please Google, please Facebook, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it's. It, I think they there is naturally, and there's also like um, what you were saying before about like creators seeing what the algorithm is rewarding and then making content specifically to be picked up by the algorithm rather than just like being creative and if it works, it works. I think everyone, and maybe even like in long form stuff, this still applies. Like what Jimmy's doing with like retention and like, mm -hmm. okay, what is the algorithm reward? I will create my craft around maximizing those analytics. Like you can do that with shorts and that changes what shows up on the platform. So that is real. That is a real valid danger. Uh, and you kind of just have to like watch it play out and, and and turn the knobs behind the scenes. I don't know that there's anything we can do, like as a few people. Isn't that, you know? I, as people, no, but I understand why there's like concern from government. Yeah. I understand at least, let's say it's not happening and there's nothing nefarious about it and it's purely like capitalist competition. That's fine. But I do understand why someone in government is like, yo, hold, hold on. You're saying they can influence what our kids do? Mm -hmm. We're the only ones supposed to do that. Because mm. please believe America's doing that everywhere else, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Right? Trying to, yeah. Yeah. No, that's real. What about like TikTok as a spyware tool? Like being able to look at other apps and like other things that you're doing on your phone as a way to monitor citizens and things like that. So they're not supposed to be able to do anything outside of the walls of their app. They will have you make an account, and maybe if you log into that account in a browser, there's a cookie that can follow you and all this stuff, but like, as far as what putting that app on your phone can actually give that company, it's it's not supposed to be very much. And companies like Apple, Google, Samsung that are in charge of like the security settings on your device are supposed to have your best interest in mind and make sure you can't be tracked by apps that didn't ask to. Right. So. You're saying supposed theoretically, to a lot. Theoretically. <laughs> it's because like I don't I don't I can't see what they're doing behind the scenes and inevitably there are bad actors and some companies okay. just throw it all out the window and do terrible things. Got it. But theoretically, yeah, they're supposed to have those those barriers in place and they're supposed to do it right. Is there any brand that you won't review or any product or any company that you take like a hard line against? It's funny, there the process of deciding what to make a video about as a product reviewer is is really interesting because there's lots and lots of products that are fine and they're like not that interesting of a video then there's products that are like really really cool and you want to make videos about those some products are terrible and that's actually worth shining a light on like hey don't get this yeah. here's a PSA or yeah. like here's how they'll graduate to the next product but all the stuff in the middle is like how do I decide what to make a video on, what's worth? I don't have some hard line in the sand. It's just a matter of like finding an angle, finding an interesting yeah. thing that can turn into a storyline, into a video maybe. Yeah. But it's just like me crossing my fingers, hoping they make good stuff usually. It's like the Yelp reviews where people give it like a three out of five. What yeah. are you doing? When I sort my <laughs> this reviews. Was decent. <laughs> yeah, I want to see the five star reviews or a and one the one star, star exactly. reviews. Yeah. I don't read the three star reviews. Okay, so there's no company that you're like, I don't think that they're ethically. No. Okay. Not really, no. I mean, there probably are some out there, and I just haven't paid attention. My in, my inbox is ninety nine point nine 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 percent garbage, and I don't re I don't respond to them. They're just boring, terrible products, and I don't care. Like there's there is endless cases, battery banks, cables, and stuff that I could make videos on that I just don't. Has have you ever had like the uh, you know Dave Portnoy from Barstool? Yeah. So he does the you know one bite everybody Pizzas, the pizza yep. thing. and like he literally can change the trajectory of a pizza place. Yep. Like he does a review and all of a sudden they actually tell the pizza place, hey, this is gonna be a good review. Make a lot of pizza. Get ready. Because <laughs> people are gonna show the fuck up. That's amazing. Have you ever done that to a product and changed the trajectory of a company? Oh, that's a great question. So I don't think single-handedly, okay. but I have, there are several instances of, 
of bad products that come out and I'll make a review of it and I'll show people how bad it is. And the responses are either one, uh, the product bombs and I take it off the shelf. That's happened. That happened with a Chromebook. That happened with a phone. Two, the company goes, hmm, yeah, this was pretty bad, but we'll learn from it and make the next one better. I think that's a win for everybody. Or three, they like defend it. No. And that does not go well for no, anybody. No, 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 does not no. go well for anybody. <laughs> so, but I also think like if a product is that bad, I'm not the only one who's saying those things. Gotcha. Sure. There's no way I'm the only one responsible for bringing down or changing the course of your company. Yeah. I will be one of many people who points out how bad this thing was. Who, who really? Yeah, uh, what's an example yeah, of defending? Yeah, I need to know. Um, okay, so there's not that much really truly bad tech, but sometimes I'll point out decisions that are like particularly user hostile where you're like, why would you- The new put, iPad? Not even the, well, maybe, but like there was a phone that HTC made a couple years ago. HTC doesn't exist anymore. They don't make phones anymore, but they made a phone with no buttons. Okay. Now, you know, your phone has a power button, yeah. volume buttons. Uh, they, they didn't have, or they had like a fake, like pressure sensitive area where like you'd have to squeeze it to make it work. And then it, it kind of worked okay, but it was like the buttons would have been fine. Other gimmicks would have been better. And I just had all of that to say about this phone. And they were like, yeah, but we don't want to have buttons in the future. So someone's got to start at some point. You won't. Yeah, <laughs> they don't exist anymore. You don't have a future. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there are things that come up where, like, and you have to understand, every, every product, there's, like, this sort of, like, nameless, faceless company behind it. But there's real people that worked on that and that really believe in that thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's tough. Because, like, yeah. I will have bad things to say about, like, not, like, like things that don't well don't work well, but choices that they made. Yeah. Where I'm like deep cut. I yeah. don't think that's a good idea. And there's like two guys that are like they're like that, that was, was that yeah. was my idea. Yeah. Yeah. Eight yeah. years I for that. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. for my family with yeah. this idea. With this idea. Yeah. yeah. Is it tough to stay neutral in that regard? Or like mm. a company that really fucks with you, giving you you know like products and like has been riding with you forever, and for you to be like, yeah, this sucks. You guys missed it. Yeah. No. I I don't ha I don't get to feel that anymore. Like I think early days when I was first like. Holy shit, I'm getting products sent to me for evaluation for free. Yeah, yeah. Early enough, that was like crazy. And I could see how you'd be like, this thing is bad, but I don't want to say that because maybe they don't send me the next thing. Yeah. Um, luckily, I've been in a position for a long time where that doesn't matter anymore. Mm. And so I have to tell the truth about the products mm. or I'm not doing yeah, that job. your brand. Exactly. Have, what they, is have the, they tried to sway you? Yeah. Yeah. Have they tried to sway you a little bit? They yeah, take you out to... Professionally. Professionally. Wait, that's many people's job. This. Oh, that's this a whole is... thing. You don't know about this? No, no, yeah, no that's no, the craziest no, thing. No. Sorry, they, they don't care about us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they will try to wine that's and dine. Underwear? That's yeah. what we get. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll try. I mean, okay, it's different in different yeah, industries, but like car industry is a classic. They'll have, like it's hard to like send you a car. No, 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 like at the company that makes the car, yeah. they'll be like, come out and see the car and have a nice dinner and stay at a five-star hotel. And like suddenly you're, you're having a great time and like driving the car at the track and it's like, all right, now write your review. And you're like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm trying to stay neutral here, but that, like I don't go to any of those because that is So you have to say not, no to those now. I say no to those, yeah. yeah. A lot of companies, I didn't even know that they pay for YouTubers' flights to their events. I had never been offered, <laughs> and I'd, I'd like flied myself the entire yeah. time, and I, I heard someone else say, like, hey, every YouTuber you know is being flown out to these events. And I was like, really? I didn't know that. I've been paying my way every time to everything, staying in my own hotels. That's a the thing they do. All these product companies will try their absolute hardest to make you feel as good as possible going into the event, even an Apple event. Really? Like they set a vibe. You walk in, everyone's clap. You seen the Apple Store? They'll, they'll clap. They'll be, yeah, welcome. How are you doing today? Wow. Yeah, come yeah, right yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Little things like that. They yeah. want you to feel good. And like a Tony Robbins. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Tony Robbins? No, that's his name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah. But that's 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 entire people's jobs is to make the reviewers feel as good as possible yeah. going in. What's the craziest thing you've been offered? Like craziest trip, craziest whatever. Has it ever just been cash? No, that's not even legal. Yeah, they they can't they can't, <laughs> right. no, they can't get away with that. But someone being like, "Yo, here's this and three mil in stock." I think that's too egregious. But they might give you that much value or more in something else. Sure, you might try. Yeah, it's usually the weird trips. Like I I've never been to this, but I I'm pretty sure in Intel or there's some yeah I think it's Intel has like a trip to Hawaii every year where they like show off their newest processor architecture. Why is it in Hawaii? I, is it Ellison maybe? Fuck. What is the, what is his uh? 
What is it, Larry Ellison own? Oracle. Oh, is Oracle? it Oracle instead of Intel? Because he owns an island in Hawaii. Yeah, which called no, it is. It is yeah. liter- It's like one of the big chip companies, oh. and I think they they all and it's like a summit, and they're like, come on out, come go, come do some hikes and stay at this hotel, and also here's a PowerPoint of our newest chips, and you're like, okay, like send me the PowerPoint. I don't see why I need to go to Hawaii. Uh, it's usually not too crazy. It's it's just like you get P- it's PR. Yeah, like they have a, a messaging behind every product, and I think. From my perspective, I always try to understand the public-facing reason for a decision and the -the behind-the-scenes corporate real reason for every decision Mm. because every decision they make has that reason too. Yeah. So even the little things. Apple goes, we will put the USB-C port on the new iPad. I was watching this video. Yeah, Yeah. and it's like, what's the public-facing reason? Oh, well, it's a better port, right? Of course, and you're like, why didn't you put it on the iPhone? Uh, (laughs) And then their their corporate behind-the-scenes reason. You were salty about this, seriously, (laughs) bro. The video, the one freeze frame you got with the fucking cord hanging over the- Dude, that's how people have to charge it now. It's insane. Um, But yeah, so that's like these companies sort of always act in their own self-interest, yeah. at least in the U.S., and that's how you have to understand the decisions they make. Sorry, what was the behind, the, the real reason that Apple wanted to do that? They Maybe. just decided they wanted to charge $450 for an iPad that doesn't deserve to charge that much for it. So they're doing a bunch of things behind the scenes. Obviously, the new port, the new chip, the new color. It's like a slightly updated design. All right, guys, Marquez had to teach Andrew how to use AirDrop on his iPhone, so mm-hmm. it's just the three of us. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about this, as Andrew says. Uh, you guys watched the Jake Paul fight? I watched the highlights, and I think that that's all that matters. You know what I mean? I didn't see it live. I couldn't watch it live. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Akash, did you see the whole fight? I did see the whole fight. Did except you really the, see the whole yeah, fight? I did see the whole fight, except when the illegal stream cut off. <laughs> <laughs> see? Okay. So I couldn't get a stream. I lost, I lost a round here or there, but I saw the rest of the fight. Okay, all right. I felt bad, though, because I was literally leaving the comedy club. Yeah. And then my friend was showing me on my phone, and I was like, we could try to order it. But then it was getting late, and it was fucking like, I didn't know if it was actually going to come in. And uh, I didn't know he was illegally streaming it, shouts to Kev, until like uh, the seventh round. But anyway, point is, Jake was fantastic. He looks really Did you sharp. watch it, Al? I saw the highlights. Yeah, thank you, right? Yeah, that's my Come God. on, Akka. Yo, <laughs> what the absolute fuck? Can we, we watch the- We all don't have an illegal stream, Jesus okay? Jesus yeah, fucking I Christ. Know. Come I'm on. I'm a law-abiding citizen, bro. Yeah. No, you're not. You're not at all. I watched it when we were allowed to watch it. And I will say, Jake. Christ almighty. Jake looked excellent. Shut the fuck up. He looked amazing. Miles, did you watch the fight? Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten in 24 hours. Yeah, I know. You are feisty. I know. Yo, you look if great. You though. watch I the highlights get... on two times speed, Silva and Paul. Yo, that was a brawl, bro. <laughs> like, those you punches. You guys are so those stupid. Those punches are so Can I tell you how stupid you guys are? <laughs> it was one of the best fights I've ever seen. I'm not even bullshitting. It was fantastic. That yeah. means nothing to me, coming from me. <laughs> I'm a fight. I'm a fight novice for sure. <laughs> like I'm a fight yeah. novice for sure. But what's the best fight you've ever seen? I'll tell you why it's better. Um, I've seen Tyson fights. T- Tyson fight who? I've seen many Tyson this fights, and they were great. I this actually seen the fight where Tyson bit the ear off. Wait, you uh, saw that was pretty you good. You saw live? No, not live. Like on TV. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm why watching. this fight was better? That one, there was no winner or loser. Tyson bit an ear off. He didn't really get a real, he didn't get a real fight. Not a full fight. This is better than that. <laughs> he, didn't believe that. Nah, he didn't believe he that. Did, he did. He uh, crumbled. Can we talk one. about this actual fight though? Do you still think you could beat Jake Paul? Jake Paul? I, t- I said when he was here, mm-hmm. if I trained for a couple months, hell yeah. So why, why, are you saying his, why are you saying his punches are slow? Jake they're, Paul, they're slow, bro. Jake Paul was fantastic. Like a 47-year-old man was dipping his punches, bro. A I mean, forty-seven-year-old, the greatest MMA fighter of all time, possibly. Yeah, he was dipping his punches. Of course, he saw was. a twenty-three-year-old human beings young out. Kid. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna dip some punches in a in an eight-round. Nah. You know, fight, people like, keep bringing up Jake Paul as twenty-six, like he started training when he was eleven. Yeah. He's been training boxing for like three, four years. That's yeah. why I think. I and can he's take beating it. professional fighters. Yeah. And Anderson's also decent. Like people point out, like the Tito Ortiz thing, and they're like, "Oh man, how bad was Tito?" Whatever. I'm like. He was an excellent striker throughout his whole career. And yeah, he's 47, blah, blah, blah. I think Jake had a great challenge. It stepped him up from where he yeah. was before. He met the challenge. And now I'm like, I'm invested in the whole career. As far as like first six fights in a professional boxing career, I don't know any other boxer that's had like a more competitive first six fights. And Jake kind of fucked him up How a many others? Bit. Bro, his first fight was against a basketball player. Bro. Yeah, and that wasn't that competitive. All right. 
Ben yeah. Askren wasn't competitive. Ben, ben Askren, Askren wasn't, wasn't, competitive. And then he wasn't takes, competitive. And, but what other fighters, I'm saying, are in that level that are <laughs> so doing now, the same thing? Now a third of his fights I'll are tell you, gone. I'll tell yeah, you what. Yeah. Right. He's fought tougher competition than Creed. Creed was fighting in Mexico. <laughs> Creed was fighting in Mexico. 18 pro fights in Mexico? That's not pro. Jake Paul, that's Ben Askren. He fought Ben Askren 18 times. All right. Creed. I don't really know about most boxers for yeah, six actually, fights, I'll be honest. I that's know, fair. But that. with that being said, I no, you look no, at, but that's a good point you because Jake any, Paul said the exact same thing here, so he just spouted it off like yeah, he thought of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you look at anyone's first six fights and it's like, all right, it's not Anderson Silva, it's not, it's not Tyron Woodley. Hey, I'll give it to him. He fought Anderson Silva, he did his thing, he mm -hmm. won. Kudos, not giving kudos it to, to that man. You're not giving it to him. I'm giving it to I him. I can tell by your subtext you're not giving it to no, him. No, I'm the giving it to him. The subtext is, I'm going to give it to him, but. What's the but that you're not saying, you fuck? The but is if I train for a couple months, <laughs> right? I'm just saying. You might get a but. Yeah, yeah I agree. Right. If you train for a little. I'm just saying. Yeah. I train for a couple months. But, good thing, I did put my money on him because I did think he would win. I thought, I, I thought Anderson Silva was too old to pass his prime. Oh, you put money on Jake. I did. Good for you, dude. Yeah. I'm uh, like, at the end of the day, I want to make some money. Yeah, I see and you. I thought he was going to win. I see you. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I'm excited for Jake's next fight. I'm like invested. At this point, I'm like... Well, they're already setting it up, I think, right? Yeah, Did you guys see this? Apparently, Jake Paul... Diaz. Uh, someone in his camp got into it with Nate Diaz. Yeah. Uh, so that. it's like, we're setting up the next fight. Yeah, yeah. And as, as to me, as obvious promo as that is, I still think it's going to be a great fight. Yeah. yeah. And again, I'm no expert, but just very much as a novice, there was a lot of action back and forth in this fight. Sure, I've seen like four fights. It's the best fight I've ever seen. <laughs> what you want from me? Son. I've seen four fights now. It's nothing. Son, son, no, no, no. Not, not one, not two, not three. I've seen four fights. Uh -huh. Boxing three of them or were in MMA? <laughs> and, and one okay. and two. Okay. And the fourth one was this one. Gotcha. No, but it was actually, I'm not bullshitting. It was a good fight. It was a fun yeah. fight to watch. I saw NFL athletes tweeting... Black ones, like this is a great fight. <laughs> so they must know. Yeah. If Des Bryant is saying it, I'm not. You're gonna argue with Des Bryant? Oh, I'm not gonna argue with Des Bryant. Yes. Right. Yes. How are the Cowboys doing? Cowboys are doing uh, so much better than I thought they'd be doing. No. How are they doing though? They're six and two. <laughs> oh shit! Really? Yeah. They're six and two, and they actually have a good Holy defense, and they shit. actually, the Eagles are like the best team still right now. But the Cowboys, I'm. I don't ever want to believe in them again because I'm expecting to get yeah. my heart ripped out, but they look really fucking good. The defense looks incredible. Dak, Dak was hurt for like five weeks and they went four and one. So they're like good. Did, but, an, did any of my Jets or Giants give them one of their losses? Because like, No, we beat the Giants. Nah, Jets are looking either. good too. Nah. You can't say both teams. No, nah, I'm both teams. I'm New York. I can be Jets and Giants. He's, he's not a sports fan. How can, you can't he's be not, Knicks he doesn't and even Nets. Think, I'm he New doesn't York. even think the Jake Paul fight was the best fight he's ever seen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does this guy know? This guy knows yeah. nothing. That's you know right. nothing. That's right. Yeah, first of all, it was an exhibition. Wasn't it? What? The Jake Paul fight. No. It wasn't an exhibition? It no. wasn't even a full fight. It wasn't 12 rounds. No, I, but I think it was sanctioned. I'm not answering because I don't know. <laughs> if we're being honest. No, it was like a professionally sanctioned fight. Oh, really? They, they had like weigh in with like the Arizona State Sports Commission. I made that up. But you know but, what? Yeah. <laughs> what, did oh, I so, say that? So it's not the bullshit that like his brother fought with, like, with, with no, Mayweather. That, come on. Like that was just no, like, that yeah, one, we got to hold the back. And that fight like, was yeah. not as good as this one because I didn't see that one. Anyway, <laughs> the real winner here is still Al, which frustrates me because he bet. Yeah, that's it. Come on, bro. Yeah, I didn't bet on this. I bet on football and got my ass washed. You're an idiot. But uh, I bet on the Lakers. You bet on the Lakers. <laughs> Good, Good job. My favorite. But team. if you Good are job. gonna play sports bets, you need to make those bets at BetOnline.ag. Use that promo code Flagrant, and we will match your initial deposit fifty percent up to a thousand dollars. That means if you deposit a thousand, they will give you an extra five hundred. So you're already winning. You're not even gambling. BetOnline.ag. Use that promo code Flagrant. Well, this is a, something Andrew always brings up, actually, with the newer, oh, I guess you hear this a lot, but like the newer iPhone, the newer whatever, how much can they really do? Yeah. At a certain point, I got an iPhone 12, the 14 came out, they're giving it to me for free, and I'm still Carrier. like, yeah. man, I don't want to change plans to get this fucking phone. Yeah. How much further can you push a phone? What do they do? Is it a lot of that with yeah. the iPad? For sure. Smartphones are what I would call mature. Yeah. So mm. 10 years ago, when we got the first really good smartphones, the difference between the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 5 was yep. massive. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of these things were like relatively significant monumental updates. Yeah. 3S to 4, you had FaceTime, crazy. Yeah, huge well, uh, features. Yeah. And now, yeah, smartphones, you know, enough billions of dollars have been poured in that like we've arrived at a pretty great form factor. Yep. And at this point, they're differentiating themselves by like priorities and decisions. Oh, this one's got the big battery. Oh, this one's got six cameras on the back or whatever. Yeah. 
Uh, so I think you're not going to see probably ever again a massive leap in specifically smartphones. So the thing that's interesting about the the iPhone is that, or Apple in general, is they will other people who use different products. Yep. But they'll also other their own consumers, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like when the new phone would come out, it would have one thing that made the other obsolete. Yeah. Right? When that FaceTime came out, if you didn't have, if someone would try to FaceTime you, that shit wouldn't go through. Yeah. You felt poor, bro. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, they made you feel away. And I think that's a great point is, is like adding a fourth camera on the back. Make it yeah. square. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Apple they went round, it's square. It's like they're running out. One that was like rubber and then the one that was metal. Like yeah. the S yeah. or something really like that, this. like cheaper. So Apple, yeah. Apple is good at this and a lot of other companies try to do this. And I, I almost made a video about this. I don't know how to frame it yet, but like they create these ladders where like, you get the baseline product, and it's good enough for 90-something percent of people, and that's probably the one you should get. But then if you turn to the side a little bit, there'll be one that's a little bit shinier mm. that is a little bit more expensive. iPhone versus like, iPhone Pro. Yeah, or even like the iPad lineup right now is a $330 iPad and then a $450 iPad that has you know, a nicer design, square, it's got yeah. USB-C, better screen, a little bit bigger screen. Okay, I could get this one. Oh, but this one's only 64 gigs. So I should probably get the updated storage one. Mm-hmm. So that's, oh, that's $599? Yeah. Oh, but the iPad Air is $599. Okay, I'll get the iPad Air. No. Okay, now what? the iPad Air is 64 gigs, <laughs> and you're like, okay. Holy I, I updated shit. to get more storage. Now yeah. the updated iPad Air is 700 Suddenly you're spending. So they just slowly walk you up the ladder it's like, it's, it's one a, at a time. It's like soda and popcorn at the movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Little it's add-ons. Like, Would you like X with that? Would you like Y with that? Would you yeah. like Z with that? Yeah. Oh, well. If you're paying that much, you should just Might get the well. bigger thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's exactly that's it. Brilliant. Just get the Do meal. Companies, You'll get pretzels yeah. with it. Do yep. companies ever access see your review before you put it up? Oh, uh, they do sometimes, and I never do. That's, oh, really? It's against my own personal policy. I respect that. Uh, and I think some of them say in their videos, but yeah, when that review goes live, the company is seeing it at the same time that everyone else is. Mm. A lot of them really pester and ask. How do you feel about it? What do you think? <laughs> what, what are you going to say? Uh, Is there anything we can help you with? PR wise, yeah. they they have meetings. They were like, okay, we gave you the phone a week ago. It's been four days. Let's get on a call. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you have problems with. And they'd like to have the opportunity to, like, of course, fix any problems or anything like that. Yeah. If I had a huge problem with something, they could be like, oh, that's actually not supposed to be like that. That's not normal. That's going to be fixed in a software update, or actually, this shouldn't. Let's get you a new unit. Whatever it was broken. Uh, so that makes sense, but they always use that time to try to explain things and like mm. fix the way you see something. So you present it a certain way in the video. Very common. Uh, but I never show anyone anything that I make until it's done. Have they ever asked you to consult on the design team? Yeah. Yeah, and that would be a weird thing because of my now your reviews relationship. Bias. Yeah, it's it, I try to stay ob- objective, obviously, and if I help to work on something. Um, like personally behind the scenes, it would be kind of weird. I've always given feedback about devices that come out and then in the next version, a lot of times the product manager will say to me like, hey, remember you said the vibration motor sucked on the Razer phone too? Check this one out. Oh wow. And like I actually feel the difference and it's like, cool, they so listen to what we're saying. That's how you consult on the design. Basically, it's retroactively. Yeah. The review yeah. is my feedback, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know how athletes have sneakers, right? Mm-hmm. How, why has nobody approached you about, or have they approached you about, okay. Yeah, it's tough. Like. I've been asked by a couple and what at this would it point. Be? Would it be a phone? Well, that's the natural one is a smartphone because yeah. I've done so many smartphones. But it'll just Dude, be like the, the MKBHD iPhone. The I phone mean, that's like hopefully a great phone, right? It would be a great phone. It has <laughs> your distinct little features, a mm-hmm. uh, couple things that are a bit different. But it is an iPhone. The adjustments that you want to make and limited run. They make a thousand of them or whatever I it is. Sure. I mean, it it's hard to do both. But it it's a be sick. flex, dude. It's such a flex. The thing about these products is the the life cycle of how long it takes to make one is longer than you think. For yeah. example, like the iPhone 14 came out in September. They've been working on the iPhone 15, and it'll probably be done in three months. And they'll have to work on the logistics of starting to get it made and starting to get all the decisions, the packaging, and the PowerPoint, and all that. But the the lead time and the run up before something is done and shipped is very masked, and you don't see that. So I, you know, in being asked to work on a smartphone, I think one of them, I won't say the company, but they were like, "We've got this phone that's like two thirds done, and you could like move the button placement a little bit and pick some colors, and like you could call it your phone." And I was like, "That's not really a. Mm. That doesn't feel meaningful." And they're like, "All right, well, the next one is like two years out, so." Okay, I guess we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. It is a long. It's a longer process than I think we realize. And 
that would be a pretty major undertaking to actually have like a ground zero start to deciding how a smartphone is. Yeah. Build, build us your phone real quick. I've made the, this video in the past, but like my dream phone is just combining other good pieces of other phones. Okay. So like I would take the screen from the S22 Ultra, it's incredible, but then I would take like the chip from the iPhone and I would take the charging from Xiaomi's phone and I would Sh take the cameras, the chip, sorry, the, the CPU, phone? Uh, Xiaomi. Xiaomi. Xiaomi is a Chinese company that You don't know has, Xiaomi? Not tech yeah. Come on. Xiaomi? Come on. Xiaomi makes some crazy fast know. charging phones. Mm. Okay. The iPhone is one of the slowest charging phones in the world. You probably don't care because it's fine. Have, maybe you're using the USB-A. That's a slower. I don't know if you know that. The USB-C <laughs> is a little faster than that. All of the iPhones are slow charging. Okay. 15 watts, just for some yeah. context. You guys um, know Xiaomi? You know that phone? I don't phone? know that shit. Yes. How, how fast know that. does Xiaomi I thought it was start? I, I know why, why, no. why, why. Huawei. 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 Similar. They're competitors. I know yeah. plus one again. One India. plus? Yeah, yeah. One yeah. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just Same bobbing. Time. You guys are in that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like your phone might charge in an hour. Zero to 100 in an hour. That's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Xiaomi phone will, will drop like 100 watt charging and charge up in like 17 minutes. Zero to 100 mm. in 17 minutes. Wow. Which seems insane. Like I would take that from that phone. Right, yeah. Uh, I would take the Does that cameras. Fatigue the battery over the long term. Theoretically, or, no, but because but. it's all heat management. Like heat's bad for batteries, and pumping tons of power into a battery is going to generate heat. But they will go overboard on cooling and make yeah. sure it's like, oh yeah, this thing never gets hot. Okay. So theoretically, no. Okay. Mm. That's kind of all I can tell. Um, but I've you know you use the phones and you you heat charge it up and it's crazy fast. I just think it's so convenient to like. Oh, I've got 20%. I'm about to go out. Let me just plug it in for, for three minutes, minutes and, and it's I'm at 60. Yeah. And you're like, Amazing. that's all I needed. Okay, so you said, and then cameras from? Cameras, I would combine the Pixel and the iPhone's cameras right now. Okay. I would take the still photos from the Pixel and the videos from the iPhone. Mm. And, and then operating system. I would take Android from the Pixel. Wow. Over Apple? Yeah, yeah. And this is like a personal preference, but I'm a customization guy. I like messing uh, with yeah. the way my phone That's looks. That's what I've heard. If you, were like, if you look at the phone like a computer and you want to customize, then yeah. Android. And if you're just, we feel like us, yeah. you yeah. just want to text and, you know. Every iPhone home screen looks the same. It's 40, whatever, icons, yeah. folders, that's it. You but got the some seamlessness, widgets. though, like between all the products of an iPhone. That is part that, is nice. Yeah. I would, you know, there are kind of pseudo other ecosystems that work similarly. And I think like, Apple's ecosystem is pretty good, but as far as like, I use a smart speaker. Google makes one of those. I use like a smart doorbell, a smart camera. There's Google so versions there's of that. So there's another ecosystem. There are other that ecosystems works. you can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I wouldn't be missing like the HomePod or anything like that. Oh, dude, they gotta let you make a phone. Yeah. That'd actually be a really cool experiment. I'm trying to say what outside company would do that, where they would make this mutant phone. Yeah. And there's also a difference though between the mutant phone that I would want for myself and the mutant phone that I think people oh, would buy. Oh, would work. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what's the people buy? Because the one that people would buy would be closer to like, this is Asus makes a, a phone called the Zenfone 9. Okay. I would take, that. it's a smaller phone, it's got a great fast screen, but I would take a fast screen from like a smaller iPhone. Like give me the iPhone Pro 120 hertz OLED in that Asus Zenfone. So I'd, I'd start with a smaller body, I'd go with a smaller camera, and I'd make it a little bit of a cheaper phone. Because the phone I want would be like $3,000. <laughs> it would be all the nicest things from every phone. Of course, of course. But the phone that I would make would probably be, you'd have to be competitive with price. That's part of the things people want in a yep. good phone. So it would be $900. You could just like do the that. Apple thing where you sell that one and then walk us up to the 3000 That's true, yeah. that's true. Has anyone Frankenstein this and actually put that battery into an iPhone or what's the... No, it's tough. Like uh, These phones are so like tightly packed. Like You can kind of maybe if you want do... Well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're all kind of just... Put, they're just built. Like if you like the Samsung screen, you can't get that screen on another phone. If you like this Google camera, that's I'm, the only one. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm so curious. You're at this point where you have so much consumer trust, right? Mm -hmm. And usually when you have consumer trust in an industry, uh, well, not usually, but a lot of people go turn that into consumer goods. Right. You're in this perfect position where everybody goes, hey, he tells us the truth about the product. Yeah. Now, if you put out a consumer good that sucks, They'll lose all faith in you. Gone. But if you put out a consumer good that is good, mm -hmm. that trust continues and you're monetizing it on the other side. Have yeah. you thought about putting out a headphone or, or any type of piece of tech? 
It is the natural evolution of what I, I, for a long time, been thinking about this. I don't know what that product would be yet because of the behind the scenes that I've observed in so many of these categories where I want that level of input, but I don't know if it's possible to do exactly what I want. Mm. But yes, uh, I think the, the obvious way of capitalizing on this trust is to make a product somewhere in the sphere of things that I review. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, sure. and I wouldn't even look at it as like only capitalizing. It's like providing the product that you know the people want. Filling something that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, the phone is hard, but you know, there's lots of accessories. There's lots of, and even some of my fellow creators have made really interesting things like cases or stand, laptop stands, things yeah. like that. Like there's cool stuff out there, which is nice. And they're actually unique and really useful because they're a creator and they think like what we want. Yeah. And I, I'm like, I want that too. Yeah. So yeah, there's stuff. There's definitely for sure. It's gonna happen. I just don't know what it is. Oh, yet. I mean you have the, the best line. online store because then you don't need to worry about like that product. You can't push your product if you know that yeah. there's actually better products have been developed because exactly. all the money that's behind them. But an and online dude, store of your best reviewed items. Just, yep. And an honest uh, review too, great. like what you wish you did different about that's it. That's what like, I pictured. I was like, I need to review my own phone, yeah. and then. Say the things that yep. need to be said about the phone because other people are going to review it too, exactly. and they're going to find the same thing. Yeah, yeah. this hurts to say because I fought really hard <laughs> for this. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blah, yep. blah, blah. exactly. Yeah, it's interesting. You yeah. know how they say um, the tech that we're using now, the government has tech that's like light years away. Mm-hmm. Have you ever Ooh. seen some shit that like has blown your mind? That- Ooh, a little bit. I think I, I asked Neil deGrasse Tyson kind of a similar question yeah. along the same lines, and he's like, "Yeah, there's endless examples in the space programs and things like that." As far as what I've seen. Basically, a lot of these companies, as part of their, like, showboating a little bit and, like, making you feel good, they'll show you the behind the scenes of things and, like, unreleased products and, like, what went into making some stuff. I've seen some stuff that is, like, like really far out that they started with, and then they sort of, like, shaved down into a normal-looking product. And some of that is really curious. Like, in the car world, there's crazy concepts in the uh, well, t- laptop tell us. world. Yeah. Tell oh, us, like, tell us. Come on, give us a little like, something. The car under the tarp that I can't talk about. You know, there's a lot of those that are like, yeah, we started with this. And sometimes they show that at like CES. They'll show you like a crazy concept car that's never going to exist. Yeah. And they'll go, damn, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then that car never ships. But then a year later, one with the same name will ship that looks kind of a little bit like it, yeah. but not really. I remember Nokia was did a YouTube video about how they were going to make a phone that you could like change the shape of it, it charge like from the sun. wraps around your you wrist. wrap around oh. your wrist and all that. And it was like, yeah. I was watching it the first time I thought it was so cool. Then I watched it again. I was like, this phone's never coming out. Never happened. Yeah. 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 Elon Musk is the one that says he wants his the the prototypes to look like the real thing. So yeah. like the Cybertruck yeah. is coming out when it looks exactly like. I think that's smart. Because that's a real thing. Lots of companies, they'll make a sweet looking concept yeah. car and it never comes out. Yeah. And then the car, like Porsche did this with the like Mission E and it was like, that's a sick looking like crazy electric car for their first EV. And then the Taycan came out and it was like a normal looking car, but it had the wheels from the yeah. concept car. Yeah. 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 Semiconductors in Taiwan and China. What happens if that shit goes down? All right, guys, we're going to take a break real quick so I can tell you about AG1. I started taking AG1 because it's a quick way to be healthy. Mark has been on it for weeks. That's why he looks fucking incredible. I just got it. That's why I'm still a fat ass. <laughs> well, anyway, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This is a special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, anti-aging, all the things, all the things, all the fucking things are supported. AG1 is a small micro habit with huge benefits. It supports better sleep quality and recovery. It supports mental clarity and alertness, and it costs you less than $3 a day. You are investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your daily coffee habit. So right now, it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Just one scoop of AG1 and you are good to go. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. <laughs> All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash flagrant. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash flagrant to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now let's get back to the show. Also, guys, we got 
some big desi energy tour dates i gotta let you know about first of all thank you everybody in philly i could not believe we sold out helium comedy club during the fucking world series it was unbelievable so thank you guys for coming out now this weekend i am coming to atlantic city november 4th and 5th i know most of you in atlantic city were too poor to afford to go to philadelphia so this is a great opportunity for you to see the only talent that will ever be in atlantic city november 11th and 12th one of the best comedy clubs in america comedy on state i'm gonna be there i'm looking forward to y'all coming through buy tickets to sell the shit out and this is big november 17th through 19th i am going to be in new york you guys have been begging me to headline back home i am doing a weekend at caroline's comedy club december 1st i'm going to be doing a college gig in tempe arizona arizona state university y'all could come or you could not i get paid either way i don't really give a fuck but the big announcement january 14th your boy, the Big Daisy Energy Tour that started in the back of bars is now in theaters. The Wilbur Theater. Tickets will sell out. So get your tickets at akashsing.com. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, semiconductors in Taiwan and China. What happens if that shit goes down? Mm, what yeah, is that about? There's just like, there's so much uh, reliance on the chips that other, other countries make. Like there's these fabricators and all these companies that make the processors that are in everything. Cars have tons of chips in them that we don't even know about mm. that operate the computers and operate the drivetrain and all this stuff. And if we don't have those and there's a chip shortage, like we have a car shortage now. Like we but just can, can't make the can cars. Can we mm. produce them here or is it just too expensive? That's the goal. And there's even a recent bill passed called the Chips Act, I think is what it's called, that is supposed to incentivize and reward companies for making things locally here mm -hmm. so that there's more so there's tax breaks if you're doing exactly it so that hopefully we don't have this huge reliance on these other countries and other companies. Yeah. Um, so it's a little scary because, yeah, sometimes there are shortages and it's just like, well, I guess we don't have a car. So, Sagar mentioned it as well. It's like Taiwan, like one factory is yep. responsible for the majority of it. And they are. It's not like you can catch up. They're 10 years ahead. Ooh. It's just Yeah, that's the tough part. It takes a lot of money yeah. to catch up. And isn't part of the issue like uh, the materials and the mining form and China has access to all of Africa pretty much? Yeah, there's probably also a little bit of like exclusivity too. And I kind of hear about this sometimes, which is where like one company will recognize their position and realize that if another company wants to compete, they just have to go to this other supplier over here. So we're just going to like buy up all their supply, buy up all their supply, buy up all their supply. Now no one can compete with us. Mm. And they'll do that on purpose to protect their position. But it's also like, well, now if you guys mess up a little bit, like mm. nobody can come along and fix it or do anything better than you did. Mm. So that sucks. Yeah, there's no incentive to improve when you have yeah. no competition. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. curious. Who do you think, in your opinion, is the greatest tech entrepreneur of all time? Ooh, tech entrepreneur. Interesting. Does Elon count as an entrepreneur? I think so. Yeah. I think he kind of swoops into companies that are on their way mm. and makes a huge difference. But maybe if an entrepreneur is like someone who started a company, um, dang, entrepreneur. I don't know that any of the people I'm thinking of are like truly starting the companies. Jobs. The ones that come to mind, yeah, Jobs was like, are, is fundamental to Apple's formative years and like he's a big reason why they are what they are. Then to open it up, I guess, tech pioneer. Yeah, yeah, it's probably Elon. Elon, really? Yeah, it's just like the, the, the vision he has to have for the future. I, and I specifically look at Tesla when I look at that. It's just like the reason every single other car company in the world, which is 100 years old, is going, oh, we need to change what we're doing. It's because of what yeah, that company yeah. did. <laughs> and proved that electric cars could be cool and useful and actually a better car. He said something in your, in your interview. He was really harping on how competitive the car industry was. Yes. But he said it almost like it was some mafia shit. Like, yeah. he kind of like laughed to himself a little bit. He was like, yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. Like, this is really competitive. Do you know what he's really trying to say? I think he's saying every car company in the U.S. other than Ford and maybe one other one has either died or been bailed out by the government. Mm. Like, it's super easy to just run out of money. Yeah. And so I think he's like very proud of the fact that Tesla didn't die or run yeah. out of money. They've been very close and yeah. have needed government subsidies, but like, it's hard to make a car company. Yeah. And there, what other new car companies can you think of that suddenly have like the mass market, like Prius of California? Like, what other new? They're all old companies. They've yeah. been around forever. So making a new car company, and in 15 years being ubiquitous on the streets all over the world is 
really hard. Unbelievably impressive. Really hard. Beat that yeah. system. Like the one thing, like the mafia, you have to buy a car through a dealership. And he went over that whole True. thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of that is like the way of thinking. And they could probably bite him a lot too, which is like the way it's being done right now, that doesn't have to keep going. We don't have to do it the way it's always been done. Yeah. And usually, usually that's actually, there's something to it. Mm, like yeah. dealership model kind of sucks. And he was right. I would rather buy my car and customize it online and just pick it up when it's ready. And he just makes more yeah. money because we cut out this commission we're paying this guy. Yeah. But why did why did the dealership model develop? Dealership There's model no is internet, terrible. But uh, what, what was it? What? I don't know exactly how it started, but now it's just like, yeah, dealers are separate companies and car manufacturers aren't allowed to sell to Their consumers. Their own cars. Yeah. So they sell them to dealerships and then dealerships sell the car. At the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price, <laughs> the sticker price, but the dealership can just haggle, do whatever they want. It's probably like alcohol, like a, like a alcohol company can on a bar, and it has to go through a distributor, and then yeah. And maybe that was the easiest way to grow it is if people are just if Chevy couldn't necessarily afford to have ten thousand dealerships across America, maybe. But if guys like yo, let me have the dealership, I'll sell your cars, you get more Chevys out on the road, hmm. and then again. The internet, before the internet, there was middlemen everywhere. Yeah. So you just needed a middleman to be like, hey, let me sell this car and then I'll get a commission. Yeah. And then you're just slowly just getting yeah, rid of But making it illegal to sell your own cars just seems absurd. There is probably some monopoly protection built in yeah. or something like that. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, because, they, uh, but because of state franchise laws, these laws protect independent car dealers by prohibiting manufacturers from selling cars directly to consumers. Uh Da, da, da. I guess it's just for yeah. protection for someone that's going to yeah. be. Okay, so Elon is number one. Um, yeah. Now, you said something interesting about how he swoops in at the right time. Yeah. I think the majority of people, myself included, see Elon as like a, a true engineer. Like he's in there doing the math problems with everybody. Uh, but it's impossible for him to do that with four different businesses. Yeah. So what is what do you think the difference between the perception from like the layman's and the people who actually know what's going on. Yeah, I, I think there's a couple different types of company leaders, and my favorite one is the, the product guy who like knows a lot about the product, cares deeply about how good the product is, and has a vision for what that should be. And then the company serves that vision. And I think like Tim Cook might be an example of like the ruthless supply chain guy, where like he's the business guy. Stock price has never been higher, but now you're not necessarily as inspired by the new products or visions from the company. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, where Steve Jobs, than a Steve, exactly. He's not thinking at all about the logistics. He's yeah. I, I, there was like a famous story of like, you know, weeks before the iPhone was going to launch, they had like a plastic display, and they're like, guys, we need it to be glass capacitive. Go, and they're like, that's impossible. We're launching this in two weeks. It's already done with the plastic screen. He's like, it has to be glass. Do it, and it's like. That's not going to work, guys. But the, the yeah, product yeah, yeah, guy yeah. was like, this is going to be better and we've got to do it right and this is the way it should be done. Where it's like, I don't know necessarily what Tim Cook would have done in that situation, but it's like Tim Cook's going to find a way to get all the supply chain stuff together to make sure they can make enough, to make sure they have their margins high enough, and mm. that's what he will, and their stock price will be through the roof because they'll make tons of money, but the products won't be the same. So then don't you need a Tim Cook and a Steve? Yeah, Like don't you, you do. need almost like a creative wild man hopefully they're side by side i mean it tends to be a hierarchy where like you got one guy at the top and that's the sort of way things go but i, I do like going to a company where they're like yeah we've got you know here's this guy he's the boss and within like a minute or two of talking to that person i know if he's a product guy or a or a design guy or an advertising guy or a supply chain guy besides tesla what are some companies where the at the head is a product guy product guy uh there's a car company called lucid mm -hmm. that i've talked to recently incredible know. behind the scenes and like really great technology that they care a lot about and I had the guy walk me through every single thing that he opened up a battery pack in front of me and pointed at things and explained things I was like this this guy's good cares about the, cares right, about yeah. the product um, and there's some people let's see if I can think so Sundar's Google Satya is Microsoft Bezos not anymore I feel like a lot of these guys are really good ruthless business leaders. Yeah. And then right underneath them is all the product guys. Yeah. And they have to convince that guy <laughs> about the product. Oh, that's it? But that's kind of interesting. Like, hmm, I wonder what's the better way. Is it the, is it the Steve at the top and then him convincing your business guys mm -hmm. 
of the ideas, or is it better to have one business guy at the top and then your creatives doing everything they can to convince? Yeah, I think you can get carried away with a Steve if he has too many ideas that aren't actually going to work. You need someone to check him, and you need someone who can go that not that one. Not this that is one. this is the Kanye thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a pretty, like, he will be incredibly successful when he's accompanied with an Adidas or an actual business that has distribution, that has yeah. the factories, and that can say, we're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. We're going to make this product. You said yes yesterday. We all agreed, you know. And they need to be able to push that line a little bit, but if you just keep going over the line over and over, there's no point in the, the other party existing. Yeah. So you need them to be able to offer some flexibility and figure things out. Yeah. I think you need both. Yeah. yeah, you definitely need both. Yeah. What do you think about Stem Player? Uh, it was I only got to use it briefly, and it was like kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and the idea of being able to like mix your own version of a song, it's cool. It was like a cool toy. Yeah. I don't know that it was like some genius thing that was gonna. I guess people think it's genius when it sells a bazillion copies or whatever. Right. I don't. I think it was just a cool toy. It felt like a toy. It didn't feel like this is gonna change the way that we listen to music. But no. Kanye said he wants yeah. to create a phone. He said that with Lex. He was oh, like, I, I want to get so. into products. Yeah. I hope he makes a phone. With <laughs> <laughs> review the Kanye phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With him there. Yeah. Just start trashing to his, his face. Like, <laughs> man. No, there's some, there's some weird phones that come out that are like, because there's a lot of gimmicks now. Like what you were saying, like most phones are complete. Like they're, they're pretty much, you can predict what it's going to do well. It's going to last one day on battery. It'll take decent 12 megapixel shots. It'll have, it'll make phone calls. It's got a camera, a screen, whatever. I think a lot of them see the opportunity to jump in smartphones and go, if we just make another phone that's also fine, people are just going to keep buying the other phones. So we need to do something, Hmm. anything, something that's different that separates it. And I've seen companies lean on like crazy design. It'll be a really good phone, but then they'll take some sacrifice for a crazy design. Flips. You're like, hmm. Or yeah, the flip, the folding thing. There's the nothing phone, which has lights on the back. There's these weird things that they'll just try, just to see. And lights se- on the back? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it looks- Right, you can see like all the inner parts of it. Yeah, it's got a, like a clear glass like a watch. back. Uh, Where you get to see kinda, the mechanisms. A little bit. Yeah, Not, yeah. It's like, they have some like fake innards in there, but yeah, it looks like a transparent back and it's okay. got lights and things like that. Like they tried, that's yeah. cool. Um, and I think that's where you'll see like the, the real- like weirdo phones. Like I'm picturing a Kanye phone just being like, it's a normal phone except insert crazy thing here. Uh, like it's going to have some weird mm-hmm. twist. Yeah. Because there's no yeah. way he just makes like a normal phone, right? Yeah. This has to be insane. So that's curious. But I think you need to put out a phone, man. Yeah. Bare minimum <laughs> yeah. products that like, I like the idea of like a, a laptop uh, holder. What is it? Like a the standard. Put, like a laptop stand or like yeah. cases and these type of things that like are around the products that you're using and improving them. But yeah, all that building up to your own phone. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever regretted a review? Like did a review and then looked back and oh, been like, great. I wasn't really fair or they really improved and I was too harsh. I don't know that I f- fully regret an entire video, but there are little pieces of reviews where I'll either look back and be like, I probably should have given more weight to the reason they did something or the the other option that they had like I'll give I'll say like I don't like something and I won't give like an alternative because that's one of the things that happens a lot where it's like I don't think they should have done that okay well what should they have done instead mm, and I don't have a good answer say, this is bad right yeah, yeah, yeah. and that will often solution. that'll yeah. often come from the people who worked on the thing they'd be like we had to do it this way because here are the four other options yeah. and here's why they all sucked yeah I'm like okay I don't yeah I get it right. so like I maybe that's a little bit of regret but I think I, I try to have a conscious like effort now of going okay why did they do this because there's a again the corporate reason there's a public facing reason let's figure out what those reasons are and then talk about it yeah and it, do you wish that you could have reviewed a piece of technology back in the day like when like the first oh. Apple computer came out or like oh. the Macintosh or like the, the w- internet like the first time you got on Netscape yeah. have you ever thought about that I did the retro tech series, which, which was a little bit of that, but I also feel like it's fun now because there's so much good tech. Mm-hmm. Maybe th- maybe those older days of tech were like more formative and more uh, like big leaps trying new things. Yeah. But I, I kind of like now that like there's so much random stuff that's just good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just like good tech. Out. I, but 
listen, I know you know we don't have all day with you. You're a very busy man. But before we end this, I really need to understand why you think this Dolly program. Oh, can we talk about AI suck. in general? Yeah, yeah. Let's have yeah. a little Dolly. AI discussion. And that I you're not going to exist in five years because AI I is just going to do reviews for you. I've I've already <laughs> submitted that there's enough high definition video of me and my voice online that I will inevitably yes. be cloned and deep faked into oblivion, and I won't need to exist. Yep. It's it's just a fact. All of us won't need to exist. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. This is where I don't get. <laughs> because they tried to do this. They tried to do a stand-up special only done in AI. I think Netflix tried yeah, yeah, to pull yeah. it out. And, really? Uh, yeah. Did and, it suck? Well, I mean, I think it was on par with a lot of Netflix uh, <laughs> you know, uh, specials. It was but, actually really above yeah, the great, yeah, yeah, great yeah, reviews. Compared, yeah. No, but uh, like, there was no jokes. There was nothing. It didn't understand. They didn't understand like the math of a joke. And because a lot of ways, yeah. the joke isn't only math, right? And your reviews aren't going to be only math, mm -hmm. right? So there's nothing human in it, and that's what we I think appreciate. Even if we're reviewing text, somebody's like, "Oh, I like the way that guy does it. He yeah. has a charm to him." Yes. So when you said this program, Dolly, which you guys should describe to the people listening right now, because there's no way I can fucking describe it. Dolly, describe Dolly, yes. okay. Yeah, don't laugh. Dolly by OpenAI. Basically, it's just a, a prompt. It's a, it's a text box field. You put in whatever text you want, and it will generate from scratch an image that resembles whatever you type. And you can be as detailed as you want. You can add adjectives. You can add actions, things like that. You could just type in horse flying a helicopter. Let's and it will just make an image, actually a bunch of images, of what it thinks a horse flying a helicopter would look like. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty cool because it's looking at all these other different photos that exist on the internet, it figures out what a horse is, it figures out what a helicopter is, it figures out what flying means, which means it'll probably put it in the helicopter, like at the controls, and then add some context, like a sky, and it's actually really impressive, so there you go. You don't even really see, yeah, there's a, there's a horse, isn't it? Sure, horse flying a helicopter. Some, and some uh, of them are this rough. This sucks. I'm not impressed. Not that great. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I'm not impressed. You, you see that this sucks, yeah. right? <laughs> Most of them are actually not that great, but I've given it some really simple prompts where it was kind of just like fun to get a creative start to making something. Like we have a graphic designer at our studio where it's like we'll give a, just a random prompt of like a thumbnail idea mm -hmm. and we get more ideas from Dolly and then we go, ah, that actually, this framing where you have the helicopter above the camera instead of just next to it, maybe let's try something like that. Mm. So you get ideas from it, but then we always go back to the human thing. But also the tech world is reacting to the potential of the tech, whereas That's you guys exactly are reacting right. to the current state of the no, tech. No, this sucks, but I do think uh, robots will kill us all. But this, Go on Netscape, go, go on Netscape back yet. in like the 90s. You'd be like, the internet's stupid. No, that shit was yeah. fire. No, no, I know. No, what, you said it was stupid, no, you said no, it was the library. Said, no, I never said no, it. I know I said it. Yeah, crazy, that was crazy. We need to bring that back. Hey, that's what you got to put in your phone. Oh, well that's the startup sound? That sound. Yeah. That'll be the boot sound. Yeah. Every time it boots up, it makes that sound. Yeah. Okay, so so what you told me that Dolly is gonna replace stand-up comedy specials all of us. in the future. All and of all of us. How? No, it's not. But here's here's why. I'll tell you why. This is gonna get better and better. And it's okay. super that cool. I believe. It's gonna get exceedingly photorealistic, high resolution, better and better at figuring out what words mean, and that's amazing, and the tech is gonna get better. But I still think we always want a human element of everything, whether it's in our entertainment or in our creative stuff. I kind of look at it like sports, where like in basketball, for example, coaches, coaching staff are always looking at analytics. What is mathematically the best way to win a game? Yeah. Mm. And like sometimes that means more threes, sometimes that means more free throws, whatever it is. We're gonna mathematically find out the best thing to do, but you still need a little bit of the human element to like actually make a basketball game to watch. I don't wanna watch AI play chess. I want to watch humans play the mm. thing, right? So no matter how good this gets, like you might be able to make an incredible video of a stand-up comedian with an hour-long special with genuinely hilarious jokes. But if we know that that's not a human making that, we're less interested. Yes. I think you still need the human part. Yeah. Of the creative thing. I feel the same way because I feel like when a human being does something, it says something about us. Yes. And that when I see a human being like run a marathon in an hour and a half or something, yes. I go, that's saying something about me as a human being and it's amazing that they were able to accomplish this feat. Yeah. If I were to see some type of like AI or a robot run a marathon, I'd be like, oh, you well, should run a marathon. But it's not yeah, me. Get tired. It's like watching National Geographic. Yeah, like, this exactly. Is not, I don't really Or I watch a, a sculpture or a painting and it's beautiful and it's amazing it says something about me as a human being that another human being like me could do something so beautiful. Yeah. And, and it's, it's definitively new, mm -hmm. where like Dolly, these are technically new, but 
it is actually taking information from just human-made things. Millions and millions of human-made images for it to figure out what a new human-made image might look like. My pushback on that is that's what human beings do. That's true, but it just feels different for you to come up with a unique idea. I also don't think you have necessarily, you don't have to, you can choose how much of that to draw from. Mm -hmm. Where like Dolly is gonna go, I wanna make this because I know what a horse looks like and I know what a helicopter looks like. I, I therefore will create this set of things. Mm -hmm. And like you can get infinite versions and you can figure out what Dolly is looking at. Well, that's the, inf the infinite versions thing is interesting to me because yesterday I think it was Mark was telling me that if Dolly gets sophisticated enough, there could be a movie that I'm watching that's made by Dolly that is made specifically to my interests. Yeah. Oh. And different the same, ending, different everything. Yeah, this, and you're not watching the same thing I'm watching, which is not what I think humans want. I think humans mm -hmm. want shared experiences. That's yes. why we love Sunday night, nine o'clock HBO show, and everybody's watching it and it feels great. Yeah. But it is interesting that it could be completely curated yep. To my interests. But when you're scrolling content on your phone, that's not necessarily communal. You just like to see cool things that you like. Yeah, and everybody's for you page. And if the AI is able to make that in the same way that like <laughs> five years ago, it'd be like, hey, did you see these three pictures in a row? Mm. You'd be like, or now if you said, do you see these three pictures in a row on Instagram? You'd say no. Yeah. Because your three pictures is different than my three pictures. Right. It would be as focused as one piece of content. Hey, did you see this piece of content? And yes. you'd say no, because it doesn't exist to anyone else except for you. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. where things get a little gnarly. That's and that's maybe even too isolating. Like, I don't want to exist in a world where I'm the only one seeing these things. But you're yeah. also the only one that gets to show people. And you get to share it and say, look what I see. Look well, what also, I found. And then those people go, oh, that's less enjoyable than what I see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't like that as much as but mine. Like, it's it's similar yeah. enough. That's, they go, that's the thing. It is what you enjoy the most. You yeah. might miss the experience, but the experience of watching it, it's what you enjoy no, the most. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. It is yeah. the For You page on crack. Yeah. 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 Your For You page is a reflection of what you like. It's for yes. yeah. you. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's not for a few yeah. people right like now you. it's for y'all. Yeah. But yeah. soon it's going to be for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because watching someone else's For You is Garbage, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I judge the <laughs> fuck out of my friends. Yeah. 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 When I pull up, yeah, we pulled up our friend Ben's for you page, and it was just <laughs> diesel ass weightlifting girls. I was like, what, what, what yeah. are you clicking on, bro? What, what's is, going what's on? What's your for you page? I got a good mix. Can, it's funny. I was just thinking, like, what? Yo, let's take yeah. a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you mine. I'll show you He's mine. He's not showing us the iPhone. He's showing us the general phone. <laughs> uh, it's the same account. Same account. Okay. Okay. Same account. All right, Fair TikTok. Enough. Let's see. Let's see what pops up. I, and I follow oh, maybe you're going three accounts. On TikTok. Right. Should I go to okay? It's Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah. That's the first thing that pops right. up. Respect. Respect. That's, that's me. Oh uh, yeah, let me screen record. Oh, I see my house with the heads up play. Good idea. Uh, this is a highlight from the team I play on. That's that couldn't be more for me. Yeah, that's extremely. Uh, for yeah, and it's not even me following, so that's pretty good. Uh, this is. I get a lot of uh, educational. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like somebody explaining, like you didn't know this about this. So whether it's like a sugar cube or some cooking thing or like some animal kingdom thing, I get mm -hmm. a lot of that. Um, a lot of pet short pet, pet videos, a lot of dogs on my free page. <laughs> a lot of pet okay. videos, another pet yeah. video. Some of these, Diego. yeah, some of these just... Not sure what that is. A lot of car stuff, although this oh, is overtime. Oh, that was Jesus. fire. That was kind of sick. I'm liking that one. <laughs> that was, that was fire. pretty sick. An ad. Bro, you got no hoes on here? That's what I was thinking. No, I think it's IG. Dude. I think Next. IG. Thanks, no. somebody. Yo, let's go with let's, IG. Let's, let's see how long before a hoes pop up. Yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. okay. Bro, right? married oh, or just girlfriend? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Yeah, screen record. All right. Let me I ain't pulled up about shit. Yeah, I think it's crazy. Post Malone. Come on. Some guy. Bros. There we go. That's your take. That's right away. Uh, that has zero. That has one comment and zero likes. I know. That is for you. Bro. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the only like. How That's does this happen? Weird. <laughs> this is just my photo album. What is this? <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay, listen, uh, Marquez, dude, you're the man. Thank you so that? much this for fun. coming on. Uh, yeah. uh, this Can we was play Open Frisbee sometime? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, one more absolutely. question. Um, you said Elon's number one. What do you feel about Neuralink? And oh. will you get it? It's our only hope against the robots. I, I think. will not be first in line. But if it's cool. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I'll check okay. it out. I'll check it out. It'll I think be like 20th. I think the first generation of anything is a little scary. Yeah. And if it's the first generation of Neuralink is irreversible, no? Yeah. Well, that's why they're trying it on people who are already fucked. Right. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I they think have, they they need a the second generation might be a uh, reversible. 
It would be oh. nice. I mean, I, I thought hope. it's a chip that goes in. How can it be reversible? I have no idea. But that's the tech. They got to figure that out. Wait, why can't it be reversible? It's an it's an it's an implant. Yeah. But it's like at the base of your brain or something, right? So something if you crazy. yank it out, maybe it would affect your brain. Yeah. I guess, but if you have Alzheimer's or if you're suffering from one of these illnesses, yeah. it doesn't you have some have terminal that. illness anyway. That yeah. is exactly. basically exactly the Matrix. Yeah. yeah. Remember the Matrix, this thing you plug into your head? Johnny yeah. Mnemonic. Okay. I Remember Johnny that. Mnemonic? The base. They're literally plugged into the base of their head. Mm -hmm. that's, cool. where all the, that's where all the nerves go right into the brain. Yeah. Dude, there's, yeah. there's a funny, somebody had a uh, maybe a meme about this or something like that, but there's a, or a joke. Uh, if you heard the movie Giant Mnemonic, mm -hmm. okay, watch it. And uh, so he he can he has like an amount of storage in his head, right? Like they've removed part of his brain, and he can like hold a certain amount of like data, right? And uh, they put too much data in there, right? And they're like, and it's it's just so funny now because they're like. There's four megabytes in your head. <laughs> How on earth is he alive yeah. with four megabytes? <laughs> now you got a fucking terabyte drive in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think about like, what's the human computer? What is if we could put like numbers on it? Like how many terabytes are? It's probably not even. It's probably way Infinite. better than we could ever think of. Yeah. A supercomputer up there. Isn't Crazy. that what we're chasing? Oh. Like with computers, we're trying to chase AI. this, right? Yeah, that's what you know. Dolly is. It's probably a. A rack of computers, shelves of computers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll get there. What do you yeah. think is the most disruptive new technology that's going to come out in the next four or five years? The year, like, Ooh. yeah, this AI is like feels like the disruptive thing. That's like internet level, smartphone level. Uh, interesting. So impactful, maybe. I yeah. think like AI is disruptive because it's like you can't just do the automatic thing anymore. Like AI will will take so much information to come up with the best thing rather than just like looking at one situation. Like there's a camera that just came out today that has AI based autofocus. And I thought about that for a while. I was like, why is it AI-based autofocus? Normally, it's either contrast-based autofocus, where it just looks for, like, I need to minimize contrast between two points and now I'm in focus. Or AI-based is like, let me figure out where the eyes are. Mm. Let me figure out where the faces are. And if something occludes the face for a minute, I'm not going to focus on the thing. I'm going to wait for that to leave to stay on the face. And that's actually much better than just normal autofocus. Absolutely. Mm. That's the type of thing that I think we'll start seeing more often is That's like smart tech instead of just like powerful tech. Right. Good AI and smart smartphones. And stuff. Yeah. Another interesting application I saw was someone that was like, oh, if you have a bunch of reviews or like consumer feedback on a product, mm -hmm. you could run AI to understand all of it and then CPT3 can basically give you a one-page write-up yep. that's extremely accurate as to like what yeah. the consensus was. Yeah. It'll like write a new review Based that would include all, the, all of the yeah, information exactly. and be like, uh, only three people said this one thing, but 70% of people said this one thing, so that's in my review. And it'll give you like a quick write. An exact review. Like the spark notes of a, of a book or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would love so that. if you have a thousand cool. reviews, instead of reading those thousand reviews, you just one. get that consolidated version of it. Yep. Oh, it's brilliant. Or you can do that with news, you can do it with like a lot of different things, and it's consolidating. You, yeah. you read a hundred, well, this is actually great for that's fake true. news or whatever it is, right? You read a hundred different articles about like what's happening in Iran. Well, that's a thing. Right? And then it will consolidate that. And then it'll be like, okay, 30% says this, 70% says this. It might even be able to separate it based on like political affiliation of the periodical. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, and that's the problem like a, now, right? A left, center, right yeah. of what a topic is. That's why. If the AI gets good enough to actually do that, that would actually be genuinely very useful. Get good enough, it's probably it's close. No? Well, someone's I mean, got to write it and be smart enough about the topic to like tell the AI to look for certain things and, right. and actually factor in like political affiliation and give it like, Things to notice, but then the AI can write its own code. Once you do that, that's, that's that would a lot. be so helpful. Yeah. yeah, a buddy of mine is a, a school teacher, and he's teaching kids how to discern between like real and fake information online. Wow. That's a isn't that crazy? Like, we didn't have that growing up, but there's a, mm. that's a class. Now. Yeah, that that's an important and class. super important. Yeah, because the kids are looking at these you fucking teach images. To adults. They yeah, should, we're dead. There's that no should be, yeah, that yeah. should be a real thing everyone has to do. But take then, that class. Even he might have a little bit of a bias because what he thinks is, is what is real, what is not. That's, that's the other thing. That's great. Okay, maybe okay, before we get on this, who who is gonna control truth? Who's gonna control truth now? And and do we feel comfortable putting it in the hands of maybe the people that are at the heads of these tech companies? The, this idea that like Instagram can say this is fake or this is real, mm -hmm. based on what? Like what they feel is real, what mm -hmm. where what what is real? Now, as stupid as that sounds, like I, I'm really concerned about that. I look at this and I go, why do you get to be the arbiter of truth? And I don't even know if the government should be. Yeah, but it, it's a huge responsibility, right? It's already kind of fading. I was gonna ask, like, what do you think is truth now? But even that is a little bit faded. Yeah. Um, and another version of that that came to mind is like in a in photography world. 
back in the day, a photo was just a photo. You expose the sensor to the to the thing, and then you close it, and then the light that hit the sensor makes the image. Now it's like your phone looks at the scene, figures out what's in the scene, takes in the light to the sensor, sure, but does a bunch of computational photography, figures out the sky is kind of overexposed, but I have a faster shutter speed version where the sky is blue, so I'm going to merge the blue sky in. Then I have the faces here. Faces are a little dark because they're in the shadow, so I have a slower shutter speed version here where the faces are brighter, merging the brighter faces. It's doing all this stuff, and there's your image. And that's What not, is real? That's not real. Yeah, what yeah, is yeah, real? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not what I took a picture of. I have the memory of what was real, and yeah. yeah, their faces were in the shadows, and yeah, the sky was like really bright, and I couldn't see it, but like, it's this is filtering different. it. It's, uh, it's making maybe the better image, yeah. but it's not the real image. It's not. So now we can't even real. trust. It's a reminder of reality as opposed to a capture of reality. Yeah, and that's and there's even a, a little bit of a bias because now, and this is something I've noticed, people with darker skin like me take photos, and our skin looks too bright in the photo because what do they train this on? All people, generally fair skin tones. If you take a photo with a Xiaomi phone it will generally lighten your skin more than if you take a photo with a Samsung That's phone. That's that Asian shit. Yeah. But on is, purpose. It, is there a racial bias there? It's on purpose. Because they want you to look... Because that. that's the better looking photo yeah. where they sell that phone. Oh, interesting. That's real. Oh, shit. Yeah, Historically, that's color <sighs> they had that issue where the, uh, the like what you would test your film against was a picture of a white family. Yep. And yeah. there was a big issue back in the day with like Kodak, like Kodachrome and like all these different types of film Yeah, where uh, darker skinned people were completely underexposed. You couldn't see them because they were, all of the test film was tested against a white family. Yeah. Wow. And that's part of the AI like problem, which is like, we're testing AI on the masses. So now when I ask Dolly for a picture of a doctor, what am I going to get? Mm. When I ask Shit. Dolly for a picture of a basketball player, what am I going to get? Right. It's <laughs> probably the most accurate because it is the most representative of what it's been pulling in, but it, is, is it affirming social bias? Exactly. Now, as... Yeah. <laughs> has like mirrors become technology? Do mirrors start to give you the images? Oh, uh, warp your image a little bit? See. Oh, that's bad. Mm. And why wouldn't they? Well, I think people. Uh, but yeah, don't you want to wake up? see a good thing. They want to see a good thing. I mean, thing. they have all these lights and these. Skinny mirrors already there. They, they got, but <laughs> the also, if you think about the gym, right? The gym, the gym has mirror. a light that is above you yeah. that's going to make your abs look more. But when defined. you look at a mirror, you don't look at it for you. You look at it for how other people see you. Well, that's, I think, anytime you look at yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. So with yeah. a mirror, like, I don't want it to lie to me. I want it to be. I want it to think. I'd be loving it when it lies to me. When I'm in the gym and I get to see the abs. But if you're checking your hair, you know it's lying to you, though. Like, if you don't know it's lying to you, it's fine. A dressing you, room, I know it's lying to me, but the clothes look better on me. I'm going to buy that shit. But when you walk out and you're like, I know I don't look like this, that like I did in that mirror, that might bother yeah. you. But sometimes no. the fe it's like with catfish. Like, everybody who's getting catfish knows they're getting catfish. But what they want yeah. is the real emotion that someone cares and loves, about, loves them. Interesting. So if you're an insecure person, I think these girls know that they don't look the way they look in their filters. But they would rather the world feel they do. But that's the world, though. That's like, the, that's the well, presentation. The mirror, that lie is something that they start to tell themselves yeah. and they start to believe. Well, I think it, it becomes like, like a, a difference it. between right. what they know they look like and what they present. Yes. Like in the mirror, you're not presenting. You're just getting this feedback. Yeah. And then you do the filtering, you present one thing, but you know you look like the other thing. Yeah. Now this, this chasm is the problem. So I think the mirror, I think people, I think people still want the real representation of themselves in the mirror. They don't want to lie to themselves, but they do want to lie to everyone else. I don't. I don't think I they think. make me. Look I don't think. Friend. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I honestly, I don't think they do. I think that. I think especially if people are insecure because even what they're seeing in the mirror might not be true. But they, they might have a body mirror. dysmorphia mm. or something like that. So now you can't even trust what you're looking at. This is fucked, man. It would be real. a great cure for body dysmorphia, though. Yeah. Which if you would, can just look in the mirror and see exactly what you want to see. What you want to see. Oh. And what you think you're supposed to like see. Shallow how? Yeah, yeah, as opposed to yeah. what your brain is telling you you're seeing, which is skinny yeah. girls who they, oh, I'm so fat, I'm so whatever, or whatever. The but there's also this like calibration element, and I don't know enough about body dysmorphia, but I feel like you look at an image and your body gives you a 30% larger, smaller version of what you're seeing. And so if you calibrate the mirror to correct for that, then your brain corrects even further. I don't know if that's real. Oh. I don't know. So this now is just you're like, going even skinny. Yeah, 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 I don't know yeah, how this yeah, works yeah. enough, but... Yeah, I think mirrors are fascinating because it's just like, yeah. what do you want to see in the mirror? Yeah. Mm. Guys, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nothing is real. Nothing, Nothing is, is real. real. Uh, put all your faith in Dolly.
and Marquez Brownlee. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, my brother. I appreciate you. Hey. Yeah. Make sure you check out Marquez. Go to his YouTube page. You know where he is. Check him out on shorts, TikTok, Instagram, all those things. We'll put the link below. You're the fucking man. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. For sure. Appreciate it.